am i audible like this only so let's not carry this thing but yeah so yeah if you want wifi password it is here I... yeah it's or you can scan that code as well that also works but yeah uh, so we'll start from the very basics and we'll go over building an app from scratch and then on day three we will deploy and we'll also see what all other apps are available for um, us to directly use right like frappe builder frappe insights we'll explore those as well and yeah so what is frappe framework that's the bigger question now uh, frappe framework so my definition of frappe framework it is a hybrid full stack web development framework right so frappe framework so the name frappe is the name of our company and we built 100% open source world class software so you can get the slides on this url and there is a frappe cloud sign up so if you don't have a local setup if you want to just try out then that's the link um, so about me uh, as i said i am mohammad hussain nagaria i have this small youtube channel that i run uh, where i build something live using frappe framework every week uh, check that out yeah so frappe framework right frappe framework is uh, the power behind erp next right uh, that you might that you all used at least once in your sentence that we erp next right so erp next is built on top of this framework and now we are building more products as well and this is mit license so anybody can use this as a web development framework to build world class web apps right in record time uh, so as you can see it is like 97.42% of your time which is crud basically can be saved if you use frappe framework right so what's possible with frappe framework so frappe framework has been used to build erp next which is like the best open source erp on the planet and enough marketing of erp next now so <laughs> then there is frappe hr game plan right the new products frappe insights lms uh, lms is what runs the frappe school right if you registered there and you use the course platform ever that is built on top of frappe as well even the cloud right the frappe cloud it was also built on top of frappe framework and it is also open source so you can build anything from a simple app for communication to a cloud platform using frappe framework so there is no limit in that right so what do i mean by hybrid right i have used this word hybrid so you might have heard of typical frameworks like django or laravel with php or node js with express right these are typical web development frameworks which you will find like a lot of youtube videos lot of stuff on them so django for example is a python framework then node js is basically a javascript framework so these are typical okay you define a class it will give you a database table on the back right django dot models if someone has heard about it so basically model is a database table in the back end it is how your entity will look like so they give you a code way of defining it you create some php files or python files and then that is that on the other end uh, you will see there are tools like retool airtable buddy base toolset these are all uh, no code low code tools right so there you don't have to write code there they will give you some drag and drop kind of interface that you can just use they will give some building blocks components and then you can connect your own apis it will can give you some web hooks so frappe framework is the best of both worlds right so it is a low code no code framework first and then if required you can go into development mode and you can start writing code like a traditional framework traditional mvc framework right so that's how i define it and then batteries included so if you have ever went through the frappe framework.com website you will see this word batteries included full stack framework right so batteries in the sense it has a rich admin interface so you can right away start using you don't have to define your own ui before you can start creating uh, or inserting data right it al already has authentication and authorization uh, role, with role permissions and etc uh, there is rest api in webhooks which we'll see uh, today itself will see the power of rest api in webhooks uh, it has caching with redis redis uh, email and pdfs are there uh, scheduler is there and much much more so these are all out of the box these batteries are out of the box right 
so everything in frappe revolves around this name called doc type right it is short for document type and doc type in frappe is like doc type everything is a doc type in frappe right so what is doc type so doc type uh, think about it uh, so there are database models right so suppose sales invoice is a model and then there is a database table for it sales invoice similarly purchase invoice is a model and there is purchase invoice yeah okay in frappe doc type is model plus the view right it's model plus the view yeah come in uh, you can come on this side is the screen visible from there oh um, i will i will suggest you sit this side you can come this this too So as well, I was I was saying the doc type is model plus the view, right? You are not just defining okay. This is how the database table is going to look like, var char two hundred. This that this is all database modeling, right? You also define the view on how it will look, how the form will look like, right? This will have columns. This will have tabs. So doc type is that. Plus you define how it will be connected to other doc types. So sales invoice has items, right? then sales invoice is connected to a particular customer i'm taking erp next example because uh of what i can gauge you all are somewhat familiar with erp next right uh so you can define the relationships one to many one to one right um and then there are more advanced features as well like web views suppose you have an item master right in your system and you want to build an e-commerce site right in that case you will want to show that as a web view in the portal we'll do that or maybe tomorrow and it is very easy to do that that is also configurable along with the doc type the web view and then this is all we call metadata right so it is not the actual data but the metadata right how will this look like will this field be mandatory will this field be read only that sort of stuff is called metadata right and there are extension features so once you have a doc type going you can use this extension features like web form or web hooks you can build reports you can write scripts notifications right these are all low code no code things once you have the doc type you can then use these features to even extend those or enhance those okay so the desk right uh, the desk we call it uh, this is an admin interface basically right this is where um, so there are two views in frappe right one is this admin interface where you see this uh, nice nav bar and then there is the form view side bar we'll explore this but the other is the website view which the normal user sees right here it is the desk user uh, employees like all of your internal company people right and then you might have some external website users they see the portal side of things so just terminology portal is the one which is on the actual website which they access and the other big piece is this desk which is the admin interface where you perform crud you have the form view list view everything right so these are the two core pieces of ui uh and so yeah this is irfan and let's talk about him so basically in this 3 days uh, we are going to solve a problem for irfan so he has a company called irfan caps obviously and he has some luxury cars right uh, he has bmw mercedes etc etc and then he has a set of drivers so what happens is um he has marketed his phone number everywhere that we give you luxury vehicles for booking right and he gets a call uh, they ask he asks them that okay what is the vehicle do you want like do you want a mercedes or a bmw or anything like that and what is the pickup point 
right? And I'll he just assigns a driver and sends that vehicle, and he maybe charges charges per hour, then he gets paid. And right now, uh, this business is run by spreadsheets, right? So when you see spreadsheets, you're like, okay, you have some work to do. So you can see this particular sheet is about vehicles. So he's keeping track of how many vehicles are does he have? What's the status of those vehicle? Whether they are in service or not, right? And then he also has uh, one other sheet for drivers. He tracks what drivers do I have, and then yet another sheet for tracking bookings, right? And then he uses those to do some charting, etc. But everything is in Excel sheets. He is fed up now. So he has come to us to build a custom Frappe app to solve this. Ready? So we'll build apps now. Mm. So before that, mm. let me start the bench. So you can follow along by the way. Uh, I would recommend you follow along because if you face any issues in between, we will be able to debug out. Yeah. So make sure you have a running setup. So let's get a running setup before we start. So if you want extra, you can take this. If you want to keep your laptop on it. Yeah. Yeah, before we start. Look. So you can bookmark this page for the duration of the training. So if you still need a local setup, I would recommend this cloud setup from GitHub. Uh, it will give you a quick setup without like in a single click. This is, uh, I've sent you an email, manual.buildwithusand.dev. Manual. Uh, Usain. Either you can directly search build with Usain in Google, there is a link to manual as well. Or manual. Then it will give you two options. So, this was the code spaces one, where you just go in a GitHub repository and just in this click, it will bring up the whole Frappica cluster. Right, it will give you the um, app and database. I have been fun. Come on in. Right? Uh, do you have this setup? Cool. If you don't have, just use the code space link. Yeah. Uh, then the second option is a fairly new one. So, these two options are apart from the regular bench setup option that we have in frappeframework.com. So, you just install Docker. And then you install this, uh, where is it? Frappe um, manager. Yeah. Wi-Fi, yeah. You can scan this. Or you. So yeah, what Frappe manager will give you is a CLI where you can directly say FM create, uh, you can tell what apps do you want and the site name and it will create the site. This is based on Docker. So it doesn't need any other dependencies other than Docker itself. Yeah. Right. New thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> it is pretty cool. I, I also have it installed. Uh, I can show you a quick demo of how it works. So FM, right? FM is Frappe manager fm list so docker is not running so as i said doc docker should be running so let's keep docker running this works on mac linux that which one manual uh, yeah in the manual itself you'll find this link as well so FM list. Yeah, as you can see, it gives you a beautiful table of what sites, ex, uh, active sites do you have? What's the status? Active, inactive, you can stop, start, and what is the path where all the data of that site is located, right? So this is one more way to create sites. And then you can say FM create to create new sites. FM, 
uh, logs so if you do dash dash help let me tell you what all commands are available so this has something that uh, the normal frappe doesn't have code right so you just say fm code the site name it will open that bench in vs code connected to the container so this is the easiest by far local setup that i have found right otherwise you will need to manage python version this version it's very um, you can even go to the shell um, fm shell version 14.localhost See, it dropped you in the shell of the shell of that container so it's very nice explore it uh, they have a comprehensive docs and this was created by rt camp one of uh, our community uh, members yeah. yeah so let's do that uh, i think everybody has almost got local setup yeah so code spaces yeah that also works so the main step is this one uh you visit this repository right uh ankush slash frappe code space and then in the code spaces you just cl click on this right so once we click on this this should yeah this will automatic yeah i'll inform so yeah, coffee and water is like self is available here. Yeah. Cool. And this is just automatic. This will bring up the VS code in the browser itself. Uh, so if anybody faces any issue with the local setup, just uh, do this one. And then later you can set up the proper local environment. Yeah. Uh, let it happen in background. So and all the assignments, right? Um so as we go, like each day there is a separate assignment. So day one is the assignment you need to do after today's session. Uh, I'll share the link. It is all in the manual. Also, the submission link is also there. How you have to submit everything is described here. So if you open day one, you will see what you have to do, right? You have to create some doc type. There are also some extra additional videos on top of that that you can watch to learn more. And then here, in the submission area, it will tell you what files you have to submit and then you can submit and it will auto grade. It will automatically give you the results or tell you why it failed, right? Uh, all three days that will happen. But after three days, right, uh, the final assignment will be there, which is a requirement if you want to get certified. So this assignment will, will also build on top of the other three days. And once you submit this, this won't automatically grade. This is more open. -ended. So here you have the business use case. You have to implement as you see fit and to whatever extent you want so you can go as deep as you want you can model real use cases whatever you want right there are some pointers to help you out on what to implement and you can submit that and then once you feel ready you can go to frappe school uh, in the batches you will see this particular batch in the list and inside that you will see evaluation schedule evaluation button and then you can choose a slot and schedule evaluation so you have uh, all the whatever I said about the evaluations, it is available in the manual. So you can read more how the evaluation will be when you have to apply for evaluations. So this should be within. So it is 45 days, like two months, say two months of this training. So today 
and then it will guide you how to schedule an evaluation right and what how will the call look like so it will be a one on one call with mostly me and you can do the demo of whatever you have built in the final assignment and then i will ask you some questions around that and then if you pass you will get a certificate otherwise you can have a round 2 where you can re prepare and apply any questions on uh, assign, uh, assignments and evaluations yeah uh, okay let me do uh, do one thing i can just do this yeah, i need to have a link shortener now <laughs> for this it is uh, visible this is the link evaluations assignments um, the links to the code space the frappe manager everything is on this single link cool should we start everybody has a setup now Yeah it's fine we we are just doing an uh, introduction of the site till then you can get the site up and running okay so i have created a new bench so bench is nothing but an orchestrator you may call it a cli tool it is a cli tool which will help you create and manage apps and sites right and we'll discuss more we'll dig deeper into the bench but first i want to show you the low code no code so whatever even if you do go to frappe cloud and create an site what you get is what i am doing here bench new site i am creating a new site for this training uh, well, let's call it irfan caps dot irfan dot caps that also works okay so it asking me for my my sql root password and now it will create a new instance new frappe instance okay so it is asking me to set up a administrator password right so this is the password for the super user you may call it administrator of the site whatever we site we are creating so you will see where it is used admin and don't worry about this scheduler is disabled as of now we will discuss more but yeah now the site is created so how do we access it right so if you see if you want to confirm the site was created or not so you can do ls so i have a lot of sites but uh, the one we created now is irfan.caps right so how do i access this right so if you started bench right let's stop and start bench again you will see uh, observe this part web running on 127.0.0 port 8000 right so by default bench will try to run on 8000 if 8000 is not available if you have multiple benches it goes 8001 8002 like that right so make sure you are using this and this is the ip address of the local machine local host so let's try visiting this now and not found okay so it says 127.0.0. does not exist and it will give you a list of sites so these are the sites that are available but this is not we are in the correct location right so what what is wrong here can anybody tell we visited the web url no i am not asking you yeah it it gives you suggestions like this are the url you can use but you are directly visiting this current site you have to set so here comes the problem so some people will be able to access this at this url 
if they only have one site and that is the current site. That's why I said there are two ways to run bench. One is multi-tenant mode, which means n number of sites in a single bench. One is the single tenant mode, one site accessible at one time. You can create multiple, but only one will be accessible, right? That is the single tenant mode. And generally, I don't suggest don't run in single tenant mode. So the code space one that has a limitation that will only run in single tenant mode because it has one URL. You can't change the URL of the code space. But in local, you can have as many URLs as you want. You can map them to the same IP, but the URL will be different. So based on the domain, bench will try to map. So it is showing you these options are available. Which one do you want me to go with site, right? So if you want, still want to use the IP one, suppose you have a remote server and you want to use its IP, you can't have the site name. Then you have to use this bench use command. Again, not recommended, it messes some of the features like of the bench. It tries to meddle with them. Bench use and then the site name. What was the site name? Erfan.caps. See, current site set to Erfan caps. So now if you even try to visit it, uh, let's go back. Let's reload. Still the same. Okay. So maybe we might have to restart bench. Let's try that. I'm restarting bench. Go back. Reload. See? Bench start. So I, I stopped manually and started. In production setup, right? You can just run bench restart. Because in the background, it will make sure it stops and starts the... Yeah. 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 Running uh, bench in single tenant mode. That means the IP address is just pointing to one side. Because otherwise, same IP address can't point to the same. Different, different sites, right? Uh, it won't make sense. So, but now we want to use in multi-tenant mode, which is the default mode. Right? We want to use multiple sites. A dot localhost, B dot localhost, Irfan dot caps, Irfan two dot caps. I have a lot of sites, and I want to simultaneously use them in different tabs of the browser. I want to use them, right? That is called multi-tenancy. For that, uh, so I will have to revert what I did. So, if I do ls here, go to sites, right? Do ls uh, code common. So there will be this JSON file you will find inside the sites folder, which is called common site config.json. So this is the common configuration for all the sites on the bench. Right? And here in the second line, you see what's the default site? Irfan.caps. Why? Because we run bench use. This should be the default site. But if you now create a new site, you will have to set that to default if you want to use it. So this is not a good way. So let's just delete default site. We don't want a default site. We'll go back to multi-tenant mode, right? Let's go back, go back, restart bench. Okay. Now we'll go to port 8000. See, again, we came back to the same issue. Now it doesn't know which site to visit. So we have to tell it that, okay, Whenever I visit whatever my site name is, just point the traffic to this particular uh, IP address. For that, bench has a command, right? So we'll run that command now. We'll go back. Bench dash dash site, right? Name of your site. Irfan dot caps add to post. So this will add irfan.caps to slash etc slash host file of your operating system. So browsers also use that file for mapping. And if they don't found it in local, they ping a DNS and find that IP address. That is the like basic of internet routing. And it will ask you for your password. You don't have to do this in code space, by the way. 
it will all uh, give you a site ready to go so as you can see it says that irfan.caps will now point to localhost and now you open a browser and you have to visit irfan.caps irfan.caps port 8000 see works you understood your issue why it was only accessible with ip you just have to add your site name to hosts then it will work any doubts in this one so yeah so as soon as you open up the site you will see this login screen which is part of the desk and the user we created the user password we gave was is the password we have to use here if you are in code space it is admin all small so the username is administrator so let's zoom administrator and admin admin login let's see the password and this is the setup wizard so this is only visible the first time you open a newly created site so this is has to be only done once and then it won't show up so you can set your language or uh, it tried to guess my country so let's keep it ad um, and complete setup so administrator right it is the first user and the only user that is created for you right you can create more users we'll see but that has all the permission powers everything the administrator can do everything so usually you don't share this login with anyone it's for uh, reserved purposes like running a debugger or recorder we have a recorder that requires administrator access okay so now we are in the bench so i will give you a brief o overview of what consists of the desk i said bench right desk the desk uh, here we have the sidebar right you will see like users is active the link users uh, this is the workspace area this can be different so depending on on which workspace you are so if i am in the tools see this area is different right so this is the workspace and here you have the nav bar so the most important part of the nav bar is this right this part uh, this is the awesome bar this is bell icon means notifications so whatever system no notifications you get will be visible here and then there are some options here so the bell icon as you can see we don't have any notifications so if there are notifications the user will be able to see here so, so examples of some notification as someone mentioned in your comment right someone assigned you a particular document we'll see what assignments are but yeah those kind of notifications will be available here and then we have help so in help you have three options so about so this will tell you so what all apps do you have installed right and what version do you have installed of it so currently i have developed version of frappe framework and nothing else so if you have erp next install it will show you erp next and the version of it right and you have some links to uh, for resources related to frappe then second we have keyboard shortcuts right so command s trigger primary action so in form view it will be save right and awesome bar we'll discuss then there are some settings alt s to open settings so i'll tell you two important that you need to remember one is the save control s that is like by default of any kind of editing application and then there is one in the form view i think that is suppose i see this right control j so what control j does is uh, wait let me close this control j will let you jump to any field you want if the form is very big say 200 fields right control j it will easily jump to any field so suppose i'm looking for uh, again uh, let's say password right go 
and it will take you to that field highlight this field wherever it is in the form doesn't matter which ta which tab or in which place of the form right let's go back and here you have the avatar you click the avatar right a is for administrator you can set a profile image so there are a few options so there is my profile my settings uh, there is reload so reload will basically clear the cache and reload the site this is not exactly the same as browser ka refresh button so if i reload you will see there for a brief uh, brief moment there is an alert at the bottom cache cleared and it reloads uh, let's go to my profile so here you will see like your activity energy points we have an energy point system we won't discuss this in our training but it's uh, in short it is like a gamification we have built into it so if you want your users to gain some points have some rankings okay assign this user 10 points on submission of a sales invoice a an example right these rules you can define and then those energy points will be visible in their profile so let's edit profile and we can set a profile photo here so as you can see there is an attach control and let's pick an image from somewhere i don't know what image do i have what is this okay. next stop we have profile image so this is the file uploader by the way the component you saw behind and this these are all part of the file uploader whenever there is an attachment field even your fields which will add soon they use the same uploader component and as you can see if you have an image you get the option to crop optimize so that is all built in so this will reduce the size of the file whenever possible and the important checkbox here is the private right yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is different like i didn't get what was the issue yeah mm -hmm. maybe no, in framework level, it is not there. Maybe ERPNX has an added layer of security for attachment files. Probably. That might be user level permission. Not part of framework, like part of framework, but you have to separately define it. It is not enabled by default. So that, so currently what it means is when you check the private, it will be only accessible. This file will be only accessible to the logged in users. Those who have authorization to access it, right? If you do it public, which means you don't check this checkbox, right, and upload it, anybody with the link will be able to access it. This is just like uh, Google Docs you have, right? Anybody with the link, anyone with the link, this is the same concept. So now, as you can see, the image got updated here, but it didn't got updated here. So this is a cache. So I'll just reload. Cache is cleared. And now we have the image available, right? So this is how you can set, uh, you have some more. Don't worry, this has happened third time now, by the morning. <laughs> Three laptops have fallen, <laughs> but yeah. So you can set a bio, this, that, this is all available on your profile. Uh, let's go back. You have view website. So I was talking about two pieces, right? The portal piece and the desk piece. So this is part of the portal. Even users that don't have access to the desk, they have access to the portal. These are called website users. Right? So they can reset their password, uh, edit profile again. Here also we have an edit profile options. So if some website users want to edit their profile, say they can use this. Uh, we can go back to the desk. So either you can just press back or if you somehow land on this page, right? If you somehow land on this page, you can just click on the avatar, switch to desk. 
it will take you back to the desk and yeah my most favorite thing in the nav bar the awesome bar so here like this is very uh, you will get used to this you type whatever wherever you want to go right and it will take you there so let's say i want to open system settings i'll just type system settings enter it will take me to system settings so this is very good for quick navigations around the system list view form view set single doc types like this one is a single we'll talk about what single doc types are but these are system settings so these are system wide setting you can set um, one of the useful things you can set here is uh, session expiry so as you can see setting this to 24 will log out the user if they are not active for 24 hours so that is configurable from here so you can configure okay after 3 day, days of inactivity log out automatically log out right that is this many more settings we have login with email link whether you want to enable or disable that that is enabled by default so users can come enter their email right if i just log out you will see there is this button so if you have that enabled right only then you will see this button login with email link then you give it an email it will send a link to your email the user can click that link and they will get logged into the system without using password let's go back i will re login but yeah this was the nav bar uh, we'll slowly slowly use it so you will come to know what it is and yeah let's go to the first shortcut we have on the first workspace user right i'll click user and it will take me to a list of users that are in the system so as i said like the administrator administrator is basically the super user this user has all the access downloading backups right changing system settings uh, recording every request so we'll learn about recorder that helps us debug some stuff and user type you can see system user which means they have access to the desk etc website user so this by default will be guest so if no if someone visits your site right they are not logged in they are guests so do anything that changes the database you will see that activity guest change something so this is the guest user trap creates this by default you can create many website users so that way is better but if you want anonymous form submissions etc these are all coming from the guest guest user and let's open up administrator so this was the list view so you will get very familiar with this this is the list view um whatever entities we have whatever doc types we have right all have a list view very identical it has filters uh, it has sorting right you can sort by different things and you can create new user so let's create a new user i'll give it an email save okay so the user got created right and you can see this is the form view so this is the individual entity right we have a list of users and when you click any particular user it will show you all the details of that user this is form view again list view form view are templatized views in the sense if you have sales invoice you will also get the form view the fields and orders will be different but the view will be same you will have some more actions so you can see that these actions are specific to the user entity create user email password uh, recently we added a impersonate feature so administrator or super users can impersonate other users so this is uh depends on the role permission so it is restricted so they will see a icon here that okay you are impersonating this user and in if they carry out any action on behalf of that user it will show it will log that this user was impersonated as this user so this is very useful for support people 
especially at our company if they want to impersonate you you have raised a support ticket right and we want to impersonate some user to check how is why is the permission not working or something like that in that case it is useful not in normal use cases no no very latest yeah 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 so there was a third party app that someone created but now we have it like in the framework itself so you can impersonate reason for impersonating uh don't want to tell confirm so as you can see now i am impersonating frappe i am so since you are impersonating this user you will have like identical to them as if you are logged in as them yeah so this can be useful if you are implementing in like hundreds of employees and you are a support person say right usually it people are the one doing support so you get a call okay my sales invoice is not accessible then you just okay impersonate this user what is happening let me see as if what he is seeing in his system this very recent week ago this feature was like added a week ago good morning yeah <laughs> good morning no 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 issues come come on yeah so this was user you can see like what all permissions it has some more information so i have like i didn't share there is a day zero assignment there you have to figure out how to change password for a user from your side so this is change password thank you uh charik can you check the camera went off thank you I don't know why it went off. Thanks. So yeah, here you can set the password for the user, and done. For any other user, like depending on your this of course, not every user can go and reset each other's password. Yeah. Yeah, one on one. We have started with very basics. So yeah. So you can explore. there are more list view and form views role list but yeah what we will start with is uh, we'll see two things how to quickly build some web pages right so suppose we will take our own use case of irfan caps he wants a landing page where he can list about his yeah his services right his business so i'll go to the website workspace and scroll down scroll down there is we also have blog posting feature so if you want to do blog post that is built in i'll click on web page and as you can see there is no web page by default and you can create a new web page so let's create a new web page i'll give is about irfan caps so we are creating a new web page simply route will be auto generated if you don't give uh, but there are a few options on how you want to author this web page right so you can directly write rich text which will be like word right there is markdown also a markup language you can directly write html right uh, you can have a slide show page builder is there so this is the most useful one because it gives you some four <laughs> this this is the fourth one Yeah. <laughs> so there is an UX issue with this thing. Yeah. 
UI is nice, but UX is not. <laughs> Yeah, on last day. So when we deploy to Fabric Cloud, we'll uh, point the custom domain to it. In normal cases, if you are self-hosting, you just have to a record or CNAME. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So everything we discuss in these three days or anything around Frappe is hundred percent open source, self-hostable. So there is nothing like okay, when you only deploy to Frappe Cloud, you get sales invoice feature <laughs> nothing like that everything is available on our, there is no separate versions right so you can install this identical because we are we are in here in the local setup right so anybody can have a local setup or you can deploy this to production as well same thing no restrictions anywhere cool so page builder gives you some blocks see so suppose in my page i want a hero image so you have different types of building blocks so let's have a hero and then edit uh, let's call it irfan caps give it a subtitle luxury cars for everyone uh, you can have a primary action so this will render as a button book now this will implement Maybe in two days, we'll implement a form that they can browse the vehicles, click on a button and book that we are going to implement as well. So let's hit submit. For now, I just want a basic web page. Hit save. As you can see, it is published, right? You can uncheck this publish if you don't want to publish it to the website. And as soon as we hit publish, there is this see on website button. So let's click that. See? It created a simple website. You can add more blocks as you want, but Irfan caps, luxury cars for anyone, book now. So user doesn't have to log in for this page. This is portal page without any restrictions. Even guests can view. Uh, so you can add some styling here. If you want to go, not go full width, right? You want to align everything to the center. You can do that. Hit save, go back, give it. Center as in okay, here. So you can say remove space, add border at the bottom, add gray background. You can even add background image if you want. Right? Let's save. And what else? Yeah, edit values. So there is this alignment. Submit, save, go back. See, looks uglier, but fine. <laughs> so this gives you an idea of like, even if just you get a Frappe Cloud instance, this is not anything we have, I haven't gone into developer mode yet. This is just, even if you give access to a user, the default uh, Frappe Cloud site, this is what you get, right? You can create web pages. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, you'll need some scripting here for implementing that button. We don't have a multi, what do you say? Multi language built in. Hmm. For desk, it is there. For desk, you can go to system settings and switch your language. Yeah. Those translations are there, contributed by community, uh, German, French, a lot of languages are there. So the whole UI changes. To that language yeah uh, what else yeah so if you want a terms and conditions page let's say now he comes and asks for a terms and condition page right uh, terms and conditions mostly text so i will choose markdown i will say markdown in markdown this is h heading level two so t and c don't what do you say? Yeah, you can have some terms and conditions. No refunds. Okay. Hit save. Again, uh, you can have some settings here. Uh, style. Full width. We don't want full width. Let's align it to the right this time. 
to the title hit save see now your content is aligned to the right terms and condition this is the title we clicked on that checkbox right so everything you are doing this is the low code no code part i was talking about right so you are not writing much code but you still get decent looking websites and again i'm using the awesome bar by the way so to jump to website settings here you can customize it even further right you can have a theme so by default frappe gives you this black button theme right uh, font is enter you can change all of that from here so you can change your app name uh, my app right you can attach a logo uh, you can define a home page and then theme is also interesting so let's create a new theme you can define the primary color right let's say red primary save text color green secondary is going to look horrible but let's try so you give it a name um perfan yeah <laughs> so you can directly set it as a default theme from here or you can go back and change it so let's directly set from here and now if i go to the website uh text is already green at some places but let's visit that web page that we created a moments ago wait this doesn't have a button maybe this one okay some reason it is not working so in that cases uh we can do one thing so frappe ca caches this page for fast uh what do you say rendering in that case you can go to website settings again website settings so website has a separate cache clear cache view website uh we can go to web page list about erfan gaps i don't know why it is not picking up the color maybe we have to theme Yes. Let's make everything red. Secondary button shadows, button gradients, pop-ins. Change the font as well, right? So let's try everything now. It should work. Uh, yeah, now it looks. that works you just have to set the proper colors everywhere so this is the background color this is i think uh, light and dark color and it also fetch the font we wanted right so that you can customize even inject your own styles css if you want to and there is yeah so you have to inspect and check what elements are being rendered there is a better way to build websites now in frappe we'll discuss that uh, on day 3 using frappe builder yeah you can like it gives you like a virtual building uh, experience yeah so maybe i'll show it right now because we have the context so i'll open up our website maybe they are updating our site so frappe.io/builder yeah, probably they are updating the site so let's wait for 5 minute but what that will do is uh, frappe builder if you search so this gives you this canvas where you can images containers create the whole design and layout here click on publish and then your website will be live on your frappe instance this is much better way to build websites now that is 
fast to start with but if you want something very um, what do you say custom designed right yeah wordpress kind of wordpress so you can do that and he, he it this also has scripting so it is built on top of framework so it has some features like if you want to pull items from your database and render them dynamically here possible so visit this page uh, we did also did a live stream so there is a 2 hour live stream so if you want to build websites this is the way to go in frappe now but i yeah you can embed your script there is I think a video. Is your glimpse of how you go about it, yeah? Just drag, drop, stop, layout. Hit publish, done. Right? This was Fabber Builder. Mm, yeah. So you can start with the basic web page doc type, and then if you want custom design stuff, easily you can install Builder. It is one of the apps. Done. Cool. So let's start solving Rifan's problems. One of the problem is solved. Now he has a website, although ugly looking, but fine. So the second step is to move away from the Excel sheets. Remember he has Excel sheets. Where is this? Yeah, there's Excel sheets. There is one for the vehicle, one for the driver. Uh, there is a slip, the uh, Wi-Fi slip. Can you pass that? Yeah. So now think about it. Uh, given his business, what will be the entities, primary entities in that business? What what data you want to capture? What do you want to keep track of? Drivers, vehicles which means the cars itself what else customers what else probably if we want to go to that extent yeah bookings bookings come even come before expenses so that's how we will make profit right uh, yeah bookings and then maybe even capture right to get completed payouts to the drivers how much he's paying out that so all those entities, we have to create doc types for them. So doc type. Now by now you have realized that doc type is the entity plus how it looks. So let's start with the very first one. So first we'll create. Let's start with. So you can go to build in the workspace or you can directly search for doc type from here. Either there is this shortcut or directly search doc type list and you will see there are already 257 doc types see uh, they keep going up and down but usually this is uh, frameworks bringing so framework brings its own doc type so as i said right everything is a doc type even doc type is a doc type you will find a meme somewhere around in internet about this so doc type is a doc type that's but yeah so now we want to build our own custom doc types there is a to do doc type right that you can see okay how does it look right here is the form you can change it but let's create a new one so first and foremost thing you need is a name for this doc type right sales invoice that is the name of that doc type purchase invoice that is the name of that doc type customer Right, these are the name of the entities or doc types. We call them in Frappe. In Frappe, we call them doc types. So, uh, driver, right? Let's start with the driver. Then, module is a way of gr grouping those doc types. Right? Suppose we, uh, we are creating new doc types which are related to some specific customizations. 
in that case you can create a new module so let's create a new one or you can use the existing ones there is custom contacts automation so i'll choose custom because this is one of the custom doc types and there is one thing i need to do forget about it i didn't do anything <laughs> no no so i had it turned on by default but now we'll discuss about that yeah by default for you it will be turned off that is developer mode yeah where is virtual uh, i think it will be inside uh, now it is not showing that option it was there it went away we'll discuss virtual doc types so virtual doc types are like the name suggests they are virtual they don't create any database table in the backend you have to tell it where to fetch the data from so uh, i was discussing right the no code low code tools they let you connect your own external backends that, that you can mimic using virtual doc type it will give you the crud but data can come from anywhere any api mongodb i have an article on connecting mongodb with frappe so that is how virtual doc there there are advanced features we'll discuss them at the end, towards the end so don't worry about it. yeah so then again module custom remember this checkbox like we'll come back to this but this is disabled right so you can't opt out of it the whatever doc type you are creating is going to be custom let's create and continue so as you can see it is empty form so this is the form builder built by our very own sharik uh, he has built this uh, i think version 15 right yeah. version 15 starting version 15 if you have version 14 you won't see this uh, you will see a table uh, where you have to manually add those but this is more visual way of doing it so here you can build how will the form look and what all fields will it have right so what all the driver can have name first name last name let's start with first name last name so I, i clicked on add section then add field what type of field do you want right what what will be the name so the first name text it will be text so if you were to do in a traditional framework varchar 255 or something like that you might define that right but here you have a list of different types of fields available you will see there is an attach which will let you attach like let the user attach a file uh, attach image which is more specific it will only let them attach of image file there is barcode button checkbox so if you see checkbox right uh, maybe let's say enabled right then the most common one is data so it has a limit of 200 characters so if you think that okay there is some text that i want to capture and at max it will be around 200 characters then this is the way to go first name last name etc this all come under this category so let's say first name all i am building visually and then again one more data last name and if you see closely on this side there is this button right Uh, it shows a title very small i don't know if it is able or not move the current field and the following to the next column done so it moves them here and you can keep on adding as many fields as you want so what else do we need for the driver let's check the excel sheet what else what was he capturing so this will dep completely depend on what the use case is some doc types have hundreds of fields so first name is there last name is there phone number and license number okay so we have a phone field right phone yeah yeah driver image let's let's because in excel he can't add images we'll give him new features right we are building a new system so let's give him an attach image uh driver profile what should we call it avatar profile profile is fine profile image or we don't need driver because driver is the name of the doc type anyway profile image phone number uh, i think one more license 
let's take data license plate uh, license number okay so we created this form dragging docking whatever we did now we'll, we will hit save I clicked save, the doc type got created and now I can go to driver list. Empty, right? By default, there is no driver in the system. It created the database table. It went and done some stuff behind the scenes that we, we will see. We'll peek behind the scenes what happened. But now you can start performing CRUD operations. You can create, read, update, delete drivers. So let's create our first driver. Uh, enabled. Let's call him John. License something something last name no phone number uh, this phone number field gives you the country code input as well so let's say uae united arab emirates some number let's save uh, phone number is not valid as you can see this comes out of the box with the phone field i don't remember what is the number of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten in the way okay wait okay eight it's better to go with what hammer <laughs> yeah works <laughs> So it does more than just counting digits, I guess, probably. So yeah, phone number. Now let's attach an image for this driver. So this time I will use a link. So you can give it a link of the image that is somewhere else without uploading. So let's search for Google. Uh, this box. Copy link address, go back, paste it, upload. Okay, wait. Doesn't work. Anything else? Ah, yeah, that. Yeah. This will work. Hopefully. We can. Otherwise, I'm doing just one other way of linking images. Now, if you hover over it, See, this is the image, yeah. No, no, it's just the link, see, CDN. So you will see this in att attachments as well, but if you visit here, right, you will see the file URL is actually, it is not storing it in the local. And compare this to the file that we uploaded, right? It is a relative path. Yeah, no, it is not caching that. If you want, you can download and have it in the system. But this is just kind of a symlink to that place. Yeah, that's the difference. And now we have the profile, phone number. But there is a lot of issues in this form. Currently, we can go and do this. useless what's what's this record used for there is no data we didn't enter any data we have to do something about it right so users don't create these empty records yeah so let's go back here is where the thing i was talking about metadata right so here you click and on the right hand side you will see there is this properties panel so whatever field you selected right all the properties related to that so let's just scroll down and see what is available. You will see the type is data because we chose it to be the label. Uh, there is the name. So this name is how it will be referred in the backend. When we start writing code or in the database, this is the name that will be used. Then you can say to make it mandatory, right? Let's also make the license number mandatory. Uh, these are probably fine. And for enabled, I want it to by default be one. 
So by default, as you see, it is zero. Zero means unchecked. One means checked. Hit save. Go back to driver list. Let's try to do the same thing. <laughs> and now it will say, okay, no, I need these two fields. So Jenny. Hit save. Nice. So now it will show you this red uh, star symbol for mandatory. And if they don't fill, it will show a message. Okay, these fields are mandatory. So yeah, what, what else can we improve here? ID is weird, right? So ID is the name. Uh, it is called the name in the backend. You will see it as a name field. And that is randomly generated by Frappe. So this is the primary key, uniquely identifying a particular record, a particular driver, right? But you can control that too. We want it, someone serial, like employee number one, employee number two. So similarly, we can have driver 001, driver 002. That will be much more useful, right? And then also I want this ID is anyway useless to the actual users, right? So maybe that can be the last column, but first name can be the first column. So that all are all configurations, right? So let's go back uh, to the doc type form. Go to the settings. Here are all the settings related to that form, right? As you can see, you have this uh, scroll down, scroll down naming section. Right here, you can control that randomly generated hash that was there. We can give our own patterns. Or you can do uh, this very popular option called auto increment. So this will give one, two, three, four, five, six. It takes less space as well in the database. We can do that if you want, or you can go by expression. Here expression, uh, it will let you write some format. So dr, let me just write and explain. dr dash hash 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 in, in curly brackets. So this portion will be dynamically replaced by, like Frappe will replace it with 001. The next record will get 002, 003, so on and so forth. This is how. And you can have date as well. So mm will be replaced by the current month whenever this driver was created. YYY will be the year, DD will be the day. And you can also refer to fields. So probably you want DR, number and then first name. You can have that. So now I'll hit save. Uh, it won't go and change the existing records. You can delete all of it if you want. So I can bulk select, actions, delete, yes. Deleted. Let's create our driver. John. No. No. License number. This is a UX issue. We'll fix it. I don't have a cousin named John. So, see. Dr zero zero one. The next one will get zero zero two, and so on and so forth. And I want the first name column here. Uh, and also this. This should be first name. Right, or even better later, we will make it full name when we uh, learn some scripting. So I'll go scroll down, form settings, no, view settings. Here you can tell what is the title field. So this will be used in the title of the form as well as it will be the first column in the list view. So in sales invoice, you might have noticed it doesn't give you the sales invoice ID in the first column. Usually it is the customer name, right? So let's call it like, we can pick the name from here. This, this thing name, or if you recall, you can pick it from there, paste it here. I'll check this box. Don't worry about it. Later we'll discuss about link fields, but let's go back to driver list now and you'll see the difference. What is the first column now? And if I click. 
what is the title of the form first name this is the title field so this like there are a lot of settings don't worry about specific settings see the approach like there are form views and list view and the fields but there is configuration on top of it like you can configure a lot of it this is the metadata i was talking about right so you can you see this check boxes in the form settings track changes track scene track views so as soon as i enable track changes i hit save go back to driver list right i change john to jenny see this you change the value of first name from john to jenny this is what that checkbox does it will track every change that happens to the form and who does that or who did that change right so this is the activity area here you will see uh different kinds of activities even i think Oh, I don't have image. Do I have? Let's attach this. Okay, let's upload. You'll see. You change the value of profile picture from this to this. So this you attached file, right? And lock icon means it is a private file. Cool. So this is the activity view. Here you will see a lot of stuff. Even if you can add comments here. So this driver. is not performing well maybe a chart commented fire him question mark right red face okay remarks right probably you won't do it publicly like this but <laughs> yeah so other users who have, who have access to this doc can also see the comments related to it uh, you can edit you can delete if you now regret this gone cool so this was like the basic form view you have the form itself and then some comments area and the activity timeline so this we can just track changes in the doc type and it will start tracking changes uh then there is this side piece where you can one thing we already saw the attachments it will show all the attachments that are in the form itself and you can attach more directly to the form without adding new fields so suppose you want his license to be attached maybe right so we can attach some random image from here and upload and you will see that now there are two attachments so what if we want to make public private private public like swap between the two so just click on the lock icon right and uncheck this hit save so tell me what is file here doc type correct good file is also a doc type as i said right everything in frappe is a doc type so file is also a doc type so when you attach something a doc type behind the scene it will create a new record of that file doc type and then it will set some values like what is the file size what is the url right and what doc type it is attached to what document it is attached to see it is attached to driver 1 right so this was attachments you can add some tags let's say vip right so what this will let you do is when you are here right you can filter by tags i only want to see vip drivers tagging is possible cool okay this was like creating basic doc type we have the doc type and then yeah mm -hmm. Mm, I don't think so. No, no, no. There is no tracking. Who changed role permission manager doesn't track changes. No. You're gonna have some hook if you want to log it. Like we'll learn about hooks. So yeah, now comes the major piece here. What actually happened behind the scene, right? When a doc type got created. like everybody can create doc types now 
right? But what actually happened? You need to understand that if you want to work more efficiently as a developer in the developer side mostly. So suppose I want this driver doc type in some other site. What I have to do right now? Will this be automatically be available somewhere? Yeah. So what actually happened is this all this stuff about uh, where it will get stored, where not is about this checkbox. So if it is a custom doc type, no files will be generated. No fi code files will be generated. This will only remain in the database of this particular site. This driver doc type. This will only be in this site doc type. Uh, in this site's database. So we can check also. Uh, go back to your bench. And then here we can say. Maria DB. So this will drop you in the database console for this site. And here we can see select star from. Or we can search for. Let us start from tab doc type where name like I want to see this. Okay, I'm reset. Wow. Maybe doc type name. Whatever. We can directly search for it. Okay. So what did I do? So I didn't say describe the driver table. I said describe tab driver. So what Frappe will do is whenever you create a doc type, it will create a corresponding database table. Uh, given it is not a single doc type, single doc types don't have a database table, a separate database table in the device. But normal doc types, what we are talking right now, Frappe will go in the back end, it will create a database table in MariaDB. But the name of that table will be tab and the name of the doc type. Tab driver. So can you guess what will be the name of the sales invoice table? Tab, uh, tab sales invoice, tab purchase invoice. So just prefix it tab and you will find and you will see it did some stuff to convert whatever you had in the UI to the actual field schema. Cool. But this is in this only. You can't share it right now. Even if you see the records that we created, let's do select star from tab driver. There is just one record dr001 that we created and you will notice there are other fields as well which we didn't add did we add creation no did we add modified this frappe adds automatically to keep track of the life cycle life cycle of the docs to show these things yeah so to show this kind of things when was it created right this is always stored in those fields cool But what if, what if, what if, what if we want to have this shippable, right? We want to take whatever we have built and give it to others so they can just install it as an app and done. So yeah, before that, we'll go back to some slides. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about the tech stack of what the framework is built on top of. So two languages. Python in the back end, JavaScript in the front end. Uh, the database is MariaDB or Postgres. Postgres support is uh, framework does support it well, but ERPNX doesn't. Uh, by well, it means okay, it just works. Uh, but not uh, MariaDB is fully supported, tested. Lot of apps. Uh, ERPNX also works with well with MariaDB. Whatever setup guides or the Docker setup you have, that all use MariaDB. And for caching and queuing, we use Redis. Uh, for front end, we use Bootstrap and jQuery. Mostly vanilla JS is there. Sprinkles of jQuery. 
and for templating right uh, we'll learn about templating tomorrow tomorrow second half if everything goes according to the plan which is not but <laughs> jinja will learn that is a templating language that is that will help us render dynamic html so that is used by frappe uh so let's discuss what is bench let's have some water before this is a big topic <laughs> it come back up no no bench is like yeah No, 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 not nine thousand. Don't uh, go to eight thousand and click this. Yeah, nine thousand is actually we'll discuss what it is. So yeah, uh, so this is like key to understanding. If you are to work with custom apps and Frappe locally, right? This. is like if you understand the better you understand this the easier it will be for you to debug some small issues uh, work around with uh, dependency issues mostly and uh, whatever we discussed like the before the host and etc that will make more sense so if you see this diagram right there is just one maria db right there are multiple sites there are multiple apps we have node js this we use for two purposes one is socket i and then other is website theme rendering so one is the running process right we'll see where it is defined redis as i discussed for caching and queuing we use redis redis is a key value store right it is not a normal database but it's fast it it keeps stuff in the ram so you might know right ram is faster than rom accessing ram is faster than rom so whatever caching you here is probably inside redis and frappe fetches it from there uh, we also have background jobs so if you want to run something in the background we also have a scheduler we will discuss that so every maybe you want to run something every day right that will come under schedule job so what is bench right if you just ls in the bench directory right you will see there is an apps directory there is sites env logs and there is a file called proc file just ls and check in your bench directory just ls see i ls into my bench directory there is this proc file there are apps folder obviously there will be apps inside it there is the sites folder where all your sites live logs some configuration env there is a folder called env so can you guess what it is what environment exactly it's the python virtual environment so bench when you install bench right you did pip install bench and you created a new bench with a bench in it it created a virtual environment around it and all the packages frappe its app its requirements installed inside that environment so whenever you are running some command the python everything that processes are running that are using this environment not your global uh what do you say python environment yeah 
So you can't just say pip install pandas and expect it to work in your custom app. Because pip is global. It will install in your system, not inside the bench. So you have to install packages separately. Right? So for that, we have a simple command. Instead of running pip install pandas, you just do bench pip install pandas. So that will install inside the env, the bench environment, virtual environment. So I will do just ls in env and I, I will ask this in the evaluation call. So remember. <laughs> so this is the env folder. You can find it has a bin. So yeah, you can see what all packages that uh, .env, httpx. So what, are, what all I have installed in my bench. Some are dependencies of Frappe, some I just installed. So these are all Python packages. Even the pip binaries and everything that is used by, ah, the open is also there, <laughs> pip. See, these are all the packages. So whenever you want to use some new package, Python package in your custom app, you just install it on the bench environment, bench pip. Cool. So, this is that piece, right? Everything is there, but the, everything runs on top of what virtual environment? This Python virtual environment and which is this env folder. So the requirements are not installed. Yeah, so whatever requirements you define your custom apps, Frappe will install them. Yeah, yeah, this, this env. So all the requirements, so each app has its own, can have its own requirements file. Recently, we switched from requirements.txt plus setup.py to pyproject.toml file. I'll show you when we dig into custom app that how you can install. So this can be useful if you are doing some, okay, you saw OpenAI, right? That I installed in one of my chatbot apps. They have a Python package. So since this is the other end of the spectrum, we shifted very quickly. We were doing in the low code, no code stuff. But now we are in this realm. Here you have full control. You can install packages, you can use them, importing in your own uh, custom app files, which you will see. But yeah, that is the Python virtual environment and my database, the database. So each site, right? The database server is one, but the database itself is one per site. So each site has one database. Each site has one database. Correct. Where do you find what database was created for each site? Some file will be there, right? Which will tell you what, what database was created, was the password for it. Yeah. So let's go into the sites directory. Uh, CD sites. And what is the site we created? Uh, Irfan.caps. Let's do ls. And you will see there is a site config.json file. Let's open it up in VS Code. Site config.json. You will see. See exactly what I was talking about the database credentials. So it created a database with this password, uh, MyDB. So here, if you are using Postgres, it will be Postgres. Then what user it created for that database? So be, you, you don't have to access directly. Frappe is accessing on your behalf using this credentials. But behind the scenes, it created a new database for your this site. So each site is own, it has its own database. Because if it was a single database, you created two sites, both can't have a driver table then. Then it has to be one table. And in that case, so everything mess up. <laughs> That's why each site has its own database. Multi-tenancy, right? That's why a single bench can have multiple sites. Yeah. Where? I just did ls to check in the site. So I went into this particular site. So sites folder has one folder for each site with the same name as the site. So for our case, it was irfan.caps. And then I just opened the site config dodges and we saw one more config file where we where we had the default site we removed it common site config so that configuration is applicable to all the sites this one just this site 
So if you define something in that common side, it will apply to all the sites on that bench. But if you just want to define it for, for one particular site, you can define it here. Right? There are some configurations that are defined on the global level itself, just like default site. But yeah, this is that. So these were sites. So sites are nothing but each site, one database, done. But now apps. Yeah, so we call them custom apps. So Frappe will come by default. When you create a new branch, Frappe will be there. Frappe is also structured just like an app, but it is like mandatory. You don't have escape out of Frappe because it brings the whole system, but you can build on top of it. So ERP next, right? It is a custom app. All apps you see in the Frappe Cloud Marketplace are custom apps. And what are custom apps you'll ask, right? So custom apps bring their own doc types. They can bring templates, web views, their own portal pages. So all will be packaged in one repository. Maybe you push it to GitHub, we'll push our app to GitHub. And someone can use this command. Where is it? Yeah. Bench get app command. It will give the git URL. It will get this app and have it in your bench. Right? So suppose uh, new site we saw. This command can be used to create a new site. But now we are coming here. So you will see we have Frappe, we have ERP next. We have our own custom app and we have two sites. So what do you think? This both sides have all the three apps. Why? We we did bench get app. It went and brought ERP next. We did bench get custom app. It went to GitHub, brought it and added it to the apps folder. Right? The apps folder. But how are these two related? <laughs> Sites and benches, uh, sites and apps. Can you guess? Yeah. So this, exactly, very correct. So it went, pulled the source code, and it kept in the bench, but it hasn't installed in the site. You have to run a command to tell, okay, I want ERP next in this site. I want custom app in this site. That's how it is multi-tenant. But you can't have separate versions, so you can't tell, okay. I want ERP next version 14 in this one and version 15 in this one. That can't happen. So version is bench level because the code is same. So when you, when it went and pulled the version 14, it is for all the sites. If you install on this one, this will also get this same, same source code. When you install on this one, this will also, go. but you have option. It is not like that. Okay. You install on the bench. So all sites have it. So you have one site, maybe it just has Frappe. You can have other site. It just has ERP next and Frappe. That can be done. So let's do that. So first we'll create a new app for us for storing all our logic and doc types for Irfan caps, the app. Uh, let's go back. Bench, new app, right? New dash app. Uh, let's call it rentals. Yeah, it will ask you some stuff. First is the title of the app. Let it be description, manage rentals and Frappe, uh, publisher, san, email, san at frappe.io. Uh, you can give a license or hit enter. You can, for now I'll hit no here or maybe yes, doesn't matter. Now, you can give it a branch name. So what happens is whenever you create a new app, right? It also initializes the GitHub repository inside it automatically. Each app is a GitHub repository in the sense, right? So you can give the name of the GitHub branch. I want, maybe I'll call it main and then it will go and create this app. And now we cd dot dot cd dot dot ls cd apps we are che checking a lot of apps again you will have just one or two but let's locate irfan uh, rentals see here is the folder 
and I will just say uh, CD into rentals LS. You will see this. I have a extension in my terminal installed that sh that shows whether I'm in a Git repository or not. So as you can see, it used the name, and there is this readme license. Uh, there is this file I was talking about here. You can define your requirements, whatever your app Python packages de uh, depends on. You can define it in the pyproject.toml pi file. Okay. I'll just open it up in VS Code. Let's enter full screen. So we created the app, right? We have the app now. But how do we install in the site? Bench. That's just site. The name of the site, which is irfan.caps. Install dash app and name of the app, which will be rentals done right so now we'll go back we'll go to irfan.caps we'll switch to desk uh, bench might stop here so you can restart because we created a new app uh, in that one step is to restart bench so it stops and doesn't start so now i'll go to about Our app got installed and it is you can see in the about it is like by default it will give some version 0 0.01 and this is the branch the github branch cool any downs in installing uh, app creating app okay so Apps, you understood what apps are, right? Yeah. Custom apps are basically they bring in their own doc types, the logic, everything. And you can install those. Kind of. But they're a lot of uh, more powerful because of the hooks feature that we'll learn. Uh, so what happens is you can create new app. It will be in the bench. It won't be installed automatically on all the sites on that bench. It's just the source code. But when we... So we use the new app command to create this new app, new app rentals. We gave it a name. It walked us through a wizard. What is the bench title? Uh, like what is the app title? Who is the publisher of the app? I'll show you where it stores that information. And then uh, we install it on the site using this command. In the site, we installed the app. So in this slide, we installed app on the site. That's what we did. And now that site has this rentals app. And that's what we were checking by going to the site and in the about. See, rentals is there. Yeah. No, multiple sites. Yeah, you are too zoomed in. Yeah, probably yes. Yeah. About yeah. Yeah, app app. Once you install that, it will be. Yeah, yeah. yeah just install it. Cool. Invalid. So this CD. Remove the CD, then we'll try again. So it says right invalid config. Okay. Uh, try restarting again. Um, but it, it, it already created the app, but it's not letting me uh, on my last time. So uh, yeah, run. Try running it. Yep. Thank you. No issues. Yeah. You listen. Huh? So yeah, yeah, I forgot to mention. So all the commands, right? I have a cheat sheet. <laughs> I forgot. How can I forget this? <laughs> thanks, thanks for the reminder. So when you go to manual, just uh, scroll down to the bottom. There is bench, and click here. So I like cheat sheets. 
So this is an A4 size. You can print and keep by your side till you get comfortable with the command. So it will tell you how to create a site, how to enable the host things we did, how to take a backup, how to restart bench, how to start bench, everything. How to create a new app, install an app on a site. So all the commands that we are using today on the bench are available on this sheet. sheet. Thanks, thanks. I almost forgot about it. <laughs> Yeah, in the manual, the last link. In the manual. See. In the manual, the last link, then click here. Are you able to find it? Okay. Cool. Three days. So we earlier it was four days. But uh, since we are leaving on 7th of night, we'll cut short it. So th the fourth day was mostly Q&A session. We'll do that online. The content will be same because three days uh, we had the content and fourth day was Q&A session. So in between we are having Q&A so you can ask anything anyways. But yeah, we'll schedule a two hour Zoom call. You all can join. After a few days, of course. <laughs> So yeah, now the app is installed. It is ready to go. Should we take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. Uh, you can come up to speed if you are following along. Uh, or we can continue for 15 minutes and take a lunch break at one. Does that work? Okay. Works right? Do that then. I can go on and on, but yeah, we have to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, there is memory for that. Okay. Uh, cool. So now I'll just open this whatever folder got created for the app, right? I said app is nothing but the source code it brings. So I will open this in VS Code and just quickly walk through what is inside this. So there is a readme file that Frappe generated for it, right? Um, some stuff on how to install this app. So you can change this, what is the path to your bench? What is URL of this repository? Install app. Um, some stuff for the information. So this will be useful when you push it to GitHub. GitHub displays it in a nice formatted way like this. This. Yeah, let's go back. This is the file I was talking about, pyproject.toml. So before this, we had two files, requirements.txt and setup.py that used to take care of this. Now it is much better. So when you told Frappe about the author and email, right, it put it here. Authors, name, email, name of the project. So this is not something specific to Frappe, by the way. This is Python. We are defining a new Python package. Each app is a Python package. So that's why we have this file. And you have what, what is the minimum required version of Python. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. In this app. Yeah. We, next step is that. So we created the driver doc type, right? So our next step will be to move that driver doc type in the app so we can share. Make sense? Yeah. So right now we are just, uh, after lunch we will go into developer mode, literally. <laughs> so dependencies, someone is asking. In requirements.txt, whatever you are defining, right? You just define them here now. You can say pandas 0.1.1. And whenever someone installs this app on their site, like on their bench, it will fetch those and which folder it will store? ENV folder. ENV is the Python virtual environment. Okay. So this you don't have to worry about like some internal stuff about that. Mostly you will be concerned about dependencies. You want to de define dependencies. I have till now used it for dependencies mostly. Cool. Some formatting setup. 
okay so now what other files do we have we have a license.txt so it asks me what license do you want this app to be so frappe is mit license so you can use sell whatever you want framework erp next is agpl so if you are giving to someone you have to give it in the same license right so that is a little bit more restrictive you can't sell it whatever you built on top of framework you can sell it so read more about if you are interested you can read more about this licenses in open source mit agpl yeah mm. then we have get ignore to ignore some cache file then we have the folder which is the same name as the app i will open it up here and here you will find a lot of folders so there is init file which makes it a python library again some python specific stuff so empty file with just the version uh, what else do we have we have config folder again empty public folder which we will discuss rentals again so people are confused by this <laughs> so rentals inside that there is a rental folder then inside that also there is a rentals folder nested folders but that is your app this is the package inside your app and then this is empty right now module it is empty right now why because we don't have any doc types so as soon as you start creating doc types right the files that get generated will be placed here make sense then we have templates folder for jinja templates you can have your html templates email templates um, if you are some reusable templates you have includes you can have that them here this is also interesting folder we will spend a lot of time in portal development uh, maybe tomorrow second half as i was saying so we will build a portal for vehicles where users can come browse list of vehicles just small e-commerce site they can book click on book it will give them a form they can fill and book automatically booking will be created done so we'll automate that part as well we are moving away from him from excel right let's give them all the power <laughs> so yeah then we have hooks.py file again third day we'll discuss a lot about this modules.txt patches.d so module uh, we have to discuss patches we'll discuss so advanced again so mostly wh whatever we now will do right will be under this folder rentals folder this is the module so you can create more modules by the way so if you want to see this in the ui what all modules an app has you can just go to module list module def uh, module def list you will see the rentals app has a rentals module this is the inside wala folder right and frappe has a lot of modules uh, there is automation modules there is social modules and module is a way of grouping doc types in simple terms so we created driver we stored it inside custom and if somehow we can move driver to this module then it will be inside our app right is it making sense no okay <laughs> right we stored it some place but if somehow we are able to move it here that will be good so that's what we'll do we can create more modules so if i just come here and create new module def and let's call it my module and here we will have to shift into developer mode so just a brief 5 minute and then we'll take a lunch break so this So this custom checkbox right 
this means that stuff is going to be in the site it won't go in the app so whatever is in the app we call that standard stuff and this is the custom stuff so suppose you deployed a site for the customer and he wants to customize he want to create in own, own doc types he can just like we did the driver doc type right it is a custom doc type it's it doesn't create any files or any co- source code for them it will live in their database itself so even if you upgrade right it will be fine uh so modules right? yeah if they are inside frappe yes so if you have them in the app and you you are you, there was some breaking change then you have to update your app to make sure it is compatible with the latest major version no so frappe will take care then yeah yeah if you do it custom like most of the cases it will automatically work there are some breaking changes and only if your customization is using that feature then you need to go and fix it otherwise it will give you migration errors that's all uh okay so yeah, no no this is this is a good question and if i am correct somewhere around here there was a discussion planned i don't know where is it yeah custom counterpass discussion so here we will all discuss all about what goes into customization and what go what, when should you decide to build an app so in short it is reusability like if you want to reuse some logic again and again and there are some things that you can't do in customization so you can install packages and uh import them in server scripts so that kind of discussions we'll discuss uh, in day 2 tomorrow yeah hmm mm-hmm. personal yeah Mhm. Personal it will fail. Fail. You rename your module otherwise that app has to rename its module. so rename doc will try to rename but uh, you have to make sure that everywhere it is same yeah there is a reason for it yeah yeah module name is going to act like that but even if you inside the module right if you have driver and someone brings in driver it won't come so it doesn't actually act as a name space so if some other brings driver because yeah yeah it can help you group it but it won't prevent any other app from bringing that will fail if yours is the first one there you will win but <laughs> if some other comes then yeah so that is a uh, like sari can discuss more uh, recently we started br- building more apps right so erp next has a doc type called crm crm note uh, he also has a crm note doc type that is clashing that's why his app is not supported in erp next so if you have erp next you can't install his app so he's planning to rename that usually new apps are doing that so game plan they are adding a prefix gp post gp this gp that so it reduces the chance of a collision so we can have rental driver yeah ir driver irfan rental driver. something if you have a driver doc type already somewhere 
Cool. Yeah, let's take a break. Yeah, we'll meet at uh, one thirty. Does that work? I don't know what's the lunch situation, but we'll find out. <laughs> we can stop recording for a bit. I, I, so before we left for lunch, we were discussing how we shift this rock type to the custom app, right? So custom app has this module definition, which is. Yeah, the builder is just the form builder. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it doesn't have any additional functionality as, as versus the previous versions. It's just the GUI. Yeah, this is the figure. Additional as in? Like any additional features to the field, to the data field. Different properties. Yeah, the properties are still okay. the same. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's the same thing. It's, it's just. Uh, the same doc type, uh, the child table has now a good UX. You can say that. Yeah. More visual. There you had to add column, break, field, and that was not so intuitive. But now it is basically, it looks like what it will be visible there. Cool. So, what if we just change this module to rentals right what if we change it to rentals rentals is the module in our app so will that generate code i hit save i go back to my app no right no why yeah custom means it will remain on the database of this site it won't create any files so now we have to uncheck this to in to uncheck this right we have to go into developer mode so there are few ways to do this. Bench dash dash site. Site name Erfan dot caps. Set config. Developer mode. One. Right. So to see what it does, uh, let's just. This is one way of doing it. I'll just open up my site code uh, site config and just observe the site config after I run this command. Let's move this here. This here. Bench dash site erfan dot caps site config. Developer mode. See what it did. Did it just went and added this? Uh, so I misspelled it. This should be underscore. Yeah. So this will switch on developer mode, right? And once you have done that, just clear cache. Right. I am clearing cache or reload. And then if you go back to setting, you will see two things. One, this site is running in developer mode. Any changes here will be updated in the code. Right? If you just want to customize, use customization instead. And now this is enabled. The checkbox, the custom checkbox got enabled right here. So now we can disable this. I can hit save. Go back. Ta-da. New folder appeared. In that, we will have our driver. See? And it has some files. So each doc type will have its own folder. And you will see files here. So in it is basically to make it a Python package. Then we have three important files. And the fourth one is also important, but developers don't give that important to this file. Sadly, but we have driver.js, which will help us customize the form or the list view, the front, the client side of it. So we call it a client script. Then there is JSON file. So you don't have to manually touch JSON files. Uh, Frappe manages it. So this is the schema of the doc type. 
so whatever you did here right this can uh, settings this we enable track changes we created this form this is stored in this json file so if we were not in developer mode it was not generating this file now if i take this file package in this app push it to github someone pulls it and they get the driver doc type if they install this app on their site because of this json file this contains all the information to create the driver doc type see uh, if you scroll down you will see what fields are there right uh, even this metadata that we set through the ui so now we have code that is what we do in developer mode make sense now you can like since this is a github repository you can commit push it to github we will do that uh, towards the end custom developments so suppose i deployed a site so in frappe i also we we have deployed one site okay yeah. and for us only we want a survey form doc type say custom i don't want it to ship in a code or reuse in another sites right so in that case we don't need developer mode developer mode is only required when you need to generate uh, this source code yeah no and you should not you can't and you should not why because in production never turn on developer mode developer mode is only for when you are locally developing apps otherwise what was supposed to be customization maybe will generate code in your server and frappe cloud as soon as you update all the changes will go away it is supposed to be like that so in frappe cloud we deliberately don't allow you to go in site config and set developer mode one so you push it to github whatever you develop locally right you push it to github and then in frappe cloud it will show update available click done only on private benches you can add custom apps but if you have self hosted it you can just do git pull in your app folder restart migrate it will come up json file is important because this frappe will look at this and say okay i need to create a tab driver doc table remember tab driver there was this database table created yeah so don't turn on developer mode on production so there you can still create doc types but what kind of doc types custom doc types with the custom checked but if you want to create standard doc types that generate code then you have to go into developer mode make sense make sense is still little confused maybe come it will come clarity but yeah so the other file is the third one is driver.py file we are going to spend some time on it uh, it will let us write logic using python so this is what we call the controller class of the driver uh, similar to models in django but uh, yeah then we have this test underscore driver class which will be uh, can be used to write unit tests right so this is that that's why i said so every doc type whenever you create a new doc type you'll get this set of files right js for customizing front end we'll one by one we'll go over each like each is a separate piece controllers is separate this is separate json is you don't have to touch frappe will keep it updated so what happens is when you update one field say you added a new field json will get updated so you'll ask right i shipped my erp next app or whatever my my app is new new field got added in driver how do i get that new field in that site then you commit that okay this was the file in the json uh, this was the change in the json file you push it to github either you pull it on frappe cloud or your self hosted instance you run bench migrate right on bench migrate like frappe cloud will automatically run for you on bench migrate frappe will look at 
all these JSON files, match it with their previous versions using hash. So we hash the JSON file. It will see that, okay, new field got added. This field got deleted and it will automatically migrate. It will automatically make changes through the database. If you add a new field, it will go and add a new field in that database table, new column in that database table, right? So that is the migration process. So in, this is not like very database migrations are general concept in web development. So usually like Django, right? You have to go manually make migrations. It will generate a file for migration and then you push it to the production and it runs that file here in Frappe. We have automatic migrations. So just based on the JSON changes, it will automatically migrate. So yeah, this is one of the major thing that happens when you do bench migrate. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Patches. You have to write a patch. So patches are, uh, so suppose Frappe is when, when you run bench migrate, right? Frappe is running some, doing some stuff behind the scene. So this is called the schema of the doc type, the table. It will be updating the schema or uh, dropping columns, adding columns, renaming columns. So there is no rename kind of, it just creates a new and deletes the old one kind of, but in patches, you can write your own script. There is a patches.txt file. This one, right? Here you can tell that I want to run this code either before the update or after the update. You have two options. Right? I will share, uh, I have like in the manual, I've shared the documentation in day two or three where you can learn more about it. But here you can run your own code while migration. Maybe you want to fix some column, right? Maybe you want to have one column you renamed it to something else but now you want to copy that data over that patches will let you run your own scripts while migration cool. and patches run only once so to fix existing data cool so yeah now we have the driver doc type and that is standard now no longer custom is checked right what more doc type should we create Michael. So before, yeah, 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 go ahead. Certain. So maybe we have to create a separate doc type. Mm -hmm. Single doc types, we will see. But yeah, we will create some normal doc types first and then we'll move on to single and child tables. So vehicles, right? Vehicle. So never name your doc types this. It is a convention that doc type name should be singular. Vehicle list, sales invoice, not sales invoices. Right? You will observe this in all Frappe apps we have. So it's always singular. Starts with a capital letter. Uh, looks good. And let's create and continue. Let's add a new section. What all fields do you want to capture? Let's check the lines. Okay. Vehicle ID uh, looks like it is auto increment, right? So we can go to setting in the naming section. We'll say auto increment. So it will say one, two, three, four. Then what else? We have make, model, year, license plate, and color. Mm -hmm. Which one? Yeah. Name, name. It is called name. Yeah, it is called name. So bench does the side. Erfan dot tabs Maria DB select star from tab driver. See, 
we didn't add a name column and you can't add a name column so if you try to do name it will say no name is already reserved for unique id okay so let's do data make again model uh year what should be the data type for year year it's just year int is fine i guess date will no i just want to capture the year part yes. yeah year and then i will just check this box non negative so it won't allow any negative numbers to be entered here yeah we can add that uh, through some script we'll do that also let's make this mandatory make model and year year is mandatory okay make model year then license what else color uh so yeah this is a good decision so either you use the color doc type but i don't think you will specifically choose a hexadecimal value for a vehicle color that's why we are doing it a data field otherwise we have a color field as well so that will be let you choose a color from the color wheel but since we are not going that specific in in a vehicle that is fine website theme we had the same field not all working as in yeah doesn't work you have tried I haven't tried. I've never tried. They don't works. Okay. Oh wait, wait, wait. yeah so this is you can fetch some content from somewhere else dynamically and display it here yeah. it's just data only with read only that's it yeah it's the same essentially so you can just replicate this with uh, data and then there is a read only checkbox same thing yeah <laughs> yeah we'll do that just after this we'll so now we saved and now we can have vehicle but now like it's better to import data in bulk we already have the excel sheet here shared with me uh, so we'll import this so we have something called data import right i'll open up data import it's also doc type of course and then you can select what do you want to import right what doc type do you want to import so i want to import driver it won't let me because that needs to be enabled at doc type level import should be enabled so we'll go back to doc type uh, let's say driver settings and again if you can't find it control or command j import go it will take you to the checkbox 
see allow import and that will allow you to import it via the data import tool i'll do the same for driver or the vehicle j import go check okay now we can go to data import list uh, you might need to refresh because it's a javascript thing like it fetches from here now i should be able to driver so either you can update existing records in bulk or you can insert new records so we want to insert new records hit save uh, it will give you a template if you want on how the excel or the csv file should look like or how it should be formatted so i don't want the template i already have the csv file but it will let us map some columns that we'll see so let me just find that file Mm -hmm. Hmm. Where did I keep those files? Yeah, drivers.csv. Got it. Let me just upload that. And you will see there are some warning set errors. Driver ID does not match with any column. First name does not match. Last name does not match. Phone number, license plate. And it is showing what columns it is trying to import. So we can map columns. So you can say driver ID is actually, we don't want it. Don't import. That's fine. It will be automatically generated based on the auto increment rule we have applied. First name is first name. Last name is last name. Phone number is phone number. License number, license number. Submit. And now you'll see it shows green because now it is able to map it to some column in our doc type, some field in our doc type, right? So if you want this file, I think I have it in the manual as well, but you can create a random file with these columns and test it out. So let's click on start import. Country code is required in phone number. Wow. Oh, I have phone numbers that are, let's not import phone number then for now. Either you have two options here, either you go back and fix the data or you remove the validation and like run a script later. Okay, let's see now what failed. I'm not importing phone number. Okay. So See? Done, right? The import is done. And you can see this phone number we didn't import, so that's fine. But everything else is here. So similarly, you can import vehicles. It usually, like, I don't know why it is not showing now. It shows you how many records is imported, how many errored. But since we have that phone number issue, it doesn't show. Phone number. Let me make it data field. And then import okay come on yes see so it successfully imported so i clicked twice so it imported twice so we have dr19 dr20 so if you open any one of it yeah no this was new records Mm -hmm. Mm 
We only had zero one. Jenny was there. Yeah, we only had Jenny. Yeah. It didn't. I imported ten records, twice. Yeah, I imported ten records twice. So if you want to update, then you give it the ID column as well. Then uh, update records. Then it will work. I I click once and then I clicked again. So it imported twice because it didn't have a unique. Yeah, uh, constraint. So this is how you can import. Export is very easy. So you go here. Mm. Wait, report view. Yeah. Yeah. Then here. Export. You can select if you want to export in Excel format or CSV. Uh, you can see export all rows. You can have some settings, right? It shows you the example of how it will generate this. Download. And it will download. Done. So this was exporting and importing of records. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Custom field and property setter, got it. Hmm. So import, right? You imported and it worked. And what happened when you updated the site? That's why it is not allowed because when you upgrade, right? Like when you run migrate, specifically in the migrate state, it looks like um, fixtures. So fixtures is the right way to do it. Then you would say, okay, custom and property setters as fixtures. And then whenever migrate is run, they are cleaned and reapplied. So when you import it and update it, it cleaned it, but it didn't reapply because you, you manually import it. Again, you have to manual update. But if you use the hooks feature that we'll discuss, in the fixtures, it will automatically clean and again apply. That's the right way to do it. Yeah, that's why it is not allowed in import now. You can directly do that from customized form. Do that from customized form instead. Overridden. Bug, probably. Bug, bug. It is not an intended. Target fix, right? Yeah, maybe old version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Otherwise, it is there. Yeah. Mm, cool. What else? Uh, that's why, like, import. Uh, I think it should say on the site right it should say on the site but due to the bug it might went away but it is not recommended to bulk uh, import that's why maybe someone disabled it yeah cool so now what so let's see a small feature uh, again so we have this driver right even if we attach the image, we are not able to see that in the form view. We want it in the form view itself, right? When you attach an image, let's say I attach this uh, image from somewhere. It is like this. If you hover, it is visible. But I want it right here. If you might have seen the employee doc type, it shows the photo right here. So for that also, we can go here in the settings, form settings, and tell it the image field, right? Hit save, go back, 
see now it is visible in the form either you can change it from here or directly from here both work now this is metadata driven development what else yeah mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, it is there three times. No, no, pointing to the same file. See. So this might be different. The attached to and the field you see, right? This can be different, but the file URL is same. No. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, not duplicated. Mm -hmm. So even if uh, just the name is same as hash is different, right? It will add a random something. Yeah. Cool. That was about file. So file has a different view as well. So toggle grid view. It will show you as a grid of folders and files. Yeah. Content wise. Yeah. Only hash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. See. Yeah, name is leaked. So you see the file name is this, but the content of the file is fetched from this one. Yeah, if you are storing potential information in the file name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, there should be some configure. Maybe I don't know, but it is like the way it is built right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exact same file content. Mm -hmm. 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 Ah. No, so, so, so you you can't depend on the file path like name as the path so you have to use the doc itself yeah like Mm. Mm. Oh, that's like manual process. Huh? No, but mm. 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 Mm -hmm.
Maybe the application logic needs to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no. Maybe like uh, as far as I can think of right now, maybe application logic needs some framework. It shouldn't depend on the framework uh, uh, resolve resolution issue. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's see what's left. Yeah, so we have two major things to cover now. Uh, so virtual fields we'll cover tomorrow with before the controllers. So REST API. So we saw one way to create read update delete documents, right? From the UI. Second is basically importing stuff. But there are more ways to perform CRUD, right? So suppose you have a driver doc type and you want to show the list of drivers in a mobile app on any third party platform service, right? Frappe comes out of the box with a REST API that you can use to talk to your Frappe backend from external systems. Any external systems via HTTP. So you can make a request, get a response, right? So... You don't have to do anything additional for that. You can just start using it, right? You don't have to like configure something anywhere. So let's, I'm going to use this Bruno. I've linked it in the manual itself. It's an API client, which will help us uh, test API requests. Yeah, Postman. I hate Postman, but (laughs) I have to mute this now. (laughs) So yeah, but yeah, this is yeah, this the creator of this uh, Bruno. He came to build with his son as well. Uh, very pro open source guy. It's like open source. It doesn't store your data anywhere. Postman immediately sent to cloud. Their cloud. Uh, Insomnia was a good. Before this, I had to use. I had been using Insomnia in the trainings. Uh, then they also did the same thing. They asked you to log in. Then I. Said, okay, fine. Then Bruno is nice. So it will generate the file in your local system itself. That's good. So you can push it along with your app as well. So let's store it somewhere. Uh, to drivers or something like that. Folder name. Rentals. Create. You can use Postman, whatever you like. Like, it's just personal opinion. <laughs> So new request, let's call it uh, drivers list. Yeah, now you have to tell it what URL to make the request to. So in Frappe, you first give the site name, which is in our case, HTTP colon slash slash irfan dot caps slash API slash V2 will use version two, the latest. You are the first one to learn this in a training. Before this, I have been used teaching only version one so now this is the latest shipped with version 15 and slash v2 so if you just do this that will be the v1 right you don't need v2 so what do we want drivers list right so this is documentation i have shared in the manual as well that will let you know what endpoints to make the request to get data so slash document slash driver so what i'm doing i'm making a get request to my site name slash api slash v2 slash document and then the name of the doc type so if you make a get request here it will return the list of drivers this is json by the way it will return in json let's create and make a request 
IO3 service temporary unavailable. What? Hmm. Oh, did you see what we did here? So we, we missed the port number. So by default, it is making to 80 and 80. Nobody is listening. I had Nginx running, but uh, yeah. So don't miss the port number. 8000. But what did we get in return? Permission error, right? If it was, it did return the actual data that would have been issue right anywhere with your site url can get any data of yours there should be some form of credentials right that you can use to authenticate this request so that is where api tokens come in so to get your api tokens as any user right so you go to user list maybe i want my own api tokens go to settings scroll down to API access and click on generate keys. So this will give you two keys. One is the API key and one is the API secret, right? So let's generate. So note this secret down somewhere because it won't be shown again. And let's paste it. Yeah, somewhere we'll paste it. In VS code itself, let's paste it here. This is API. Secret. I have floating notes somewhere. See? Maybe some previous training session API key and secret. <laughs> okay. And then uh, if you close that dialog down, you will see you also have an API key. So grab both of this. Uh, let's go back to the API client. Here you have to send it in the header, the request headers. Let's create a new header. I'll call it like you have to call it authorization exactly. Then token, then API key that we copied from Frappe, colon, don't worry, API secret. Okay. What did I do? So I added a new header to this request with. So token should be exact and then you combine your API key and API secret with a colon in between. That becomes the token. Right. And now we try to make the request again. See, we got the data back. So here you can see driver one, driver two, driver three. By default, it returns the, just the name. So you can ask more of out, more out of it. So you can say, okay. Uh, not just driver, I want this fields. First name, last name, and now I'll make the request. Got it? So in URL parameters, you can configure. You can have order by, you can have filters right in the URL parameters. All fields? You got it. Yeah. Yeah, API connection. Even you can make multiple Frappe instances talk. All fields just do star. About? Mm -hmm. In the list, uh, there is a new API fire is did. It's trying to, it is not done yet, but if you need that, right, you have to make 
you have to get the individual record. So suppose I will do dr001. In this, in this case, it will just fetch one particular driver. See which driver? With the name of 001. Here if you have child table, it will fetch all the child table rows as well. Hmm. Yeah, it is, it is a pattern. So this part is common. Then this is the doc type name. So this can be driver if you want list of driver, vehicle if you want list of vehicles, sales invoice if you want list of sales invoices. And if you don't give this part and make a get request, it will just give you all, all of them. But if you add a particular name, it will give you just that record. Right? So here document will become method and then give your path to your whatever API. Just that part will change. So document is specifically for the REST API that we are discussing, the standard REST API that comes out of the box. So what if I want to create new driver? So instead of a get request, you make a post request and send in Either you can send form data as well, but I'll send JSON. So let's send first name as I want to enroll myself. At, I am not good at driving, so probably he's risking. Yeah, my brother is good at driving. So. Yeah, let's make a request with this data. Mandatory error, what is mandatory? License number is mandatory, okay. So this API V2, right? This is what brings this standard structure of errors. So it will give you all the errors in a list nicely. So you can, in your front-end application or in your mobile app, you can process this and display it nicely to the user. Before V2, it was not there. So if I do the same, I just change V2 to something else, like the older one, and you see the error, right? So earlier it was used to be called resource, and just API. See, no standard format. You can't Guess you have to check whether there is exact type or exact this and multiple errors. How is it going to handle? So this API V2 brings this standard of Yeah, so it will put all the errors inside a list in error key. Okay, license number. Let's give a random license number. Yeah, so it returned this document back that it created. Done. So now you know two ways to do CRUD. One is the API, the other is from the UI. There is one more way we are going to learn tomorrow through the script. So just that save button that we clicked after creating the doc type gave you a lot of options to do CRUD, right? This also comes out of the wild. By the way, if you have ever worked with a traditional framework like Django or anything, it won't con the REST API, you have to install a separate package, define one class for each entity you want to access. I have done it. So I know, like it is hard. It's very easy uh, compared to that. And then you can write your own APIs on top of it. That's always there, as I said, like best of both worlds. Cool. So this was REST API, yeah. Token. So you go to the user list. Whoever, like, suppose there are 10 employees, you want to generate a token for one of the employees, you go to their user record, right? And then go to settings, API access. All employees. So no, then. Yeah, API user you can create. Hmm.
every user needs a username password every, just say, every user needs a username password right yeah individually they have to authenticate because they will make requests individually right thousand users yeah so automatically what you can do is yeah 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 it is still there you st then you have to manage cookies it returns cookie and then you have to store that cookie and send it with every request yeah this is good uh, like the ideal use case for this is external services where probably you will have one pair only one pair of keys maybe one frappe instance is talking to the another frappe, other frappe instance so mostly one key value pair and that too with a uh, elevated credentials than other users so you can create something like we have this like a separate user apart from the employees api at uh, rapecloud.com right we create a user it has more permissions and then we use its keys to talk with the frappe instance instead of using because it logs right it will show you in the activity logs that okay api created this api created that it reads well as well and you can clearly see okay uh send grid api created this something like that yeah any more doubts in api we'll revisit this once we have controllers so write our own apis yeah for the one last time we are going back to this slide where is it yeah This is the last topic of today before we uh, go into a completely different topic. So we saw the bench, right? The bench folder is there, sites are there, apps are there, MariaDB is there. But there are some more processes. Redis, where is it? We haven't seen Redis yet. If it is there, where is it? Where is Node? If it is running, right? These all are, I said, these are processes that are running. We saw the paths and virtual environments. Background jobs, if they are running, where are they running? You might want to ask, right? The web process is there. We can open the website and everything is there. But where are these guys running? Right? <laughs> so let's open this file in uh, the bench directory, root of the bench directory. There is a file named proc file. I'll go to the root of the directory. Yeah, I've just opened it here. So proc file is short for process file. So it defines what all processes will run when you run bench start. So if you now go back and look at the logs, you will see familiar stuff. See web. Here also we have web. Right. Uh, watch here also you have watch so when you run bench start it will look at this file this proc file and start these processes so there are three redis instances i'll come back to why there are three there is this web and it is running on port here is where the port is coming from so if you change it to 8001 and start bench change it to 8001 right and restart bench okay, where, 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 where. okay let me restart bench see where did web start 8001 so this proves that proc file is being used to start these processes there is socket io so socket io is used for real time purposes pushing real time events to the front end and it has a pair like so this is the node you saw saw the node box right this is where the node is running see node 16 point whatever version you have and then it is starting this javascript file that we have and that push emits the socket io events to the front end that is combined with this redis socket io very interesting okay where is
come on don't ask me to sign in it's fine you can show give me no won't let me that's fine let's close this <laughs> Okay, I'll do it here. Uh, I have whiteboard. Yeah. So suppose this is your custom app, right? Visible? Yeah. This is your custom app, Python side of things. Python. And then I'll duplicate this. This is your client, right? This is like the user who is using your site, the instance, the site they have opened. this is redis okay i'll tell you which particular redis let me just bring this here this redis socket io this process that we are starting right this is this redis socket io and then we had one more process which was the node which one this one socket io okay so in total two processes are there this one this is your python side right this is your client so what happens is when you publish an event like whenever frappe wants to publish a real time event to the front end it can't directly talk to the front end right so it will go and make a request like put that event in a socket io this redis queue and that will be picked up by the node and then node socket io will push it to the front end very advanced stuff usually you wouldn't want to uh is better for understanding purposes you won't uh, use much of it because frappe provides an ab abstraction on top of it you just call frappe dot publish real time it will publish and all this stuff will happen behind the scenes but it's always good to know why there are separate redis just for socket io right and node is there node is why to publish those events to the front end cool. I have built it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I published to marketplace as well. There is yeah, one of the episodes. I built it live, so you will find the video as well. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, one very real time. So you can only publish events from the backend. Listen on the front end. You can't do the other way around yet. Maybe someone can come in. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, now there are eight installs. Last I checked, it was just two installs. <laughs> but yeah, this. It is in the desk, by the way. If you observe, it is in the desk. There is a feature which lets you completely control the UI, which we call the custom page. That's how I embedded it in the Frappe itself. So yeah, this is. Uh, so we discussed this process. So let's move it up. We discussed the web process, which is actually the web server, which is listening and responding to the requests. When you open it in browser, it goes back. This is the process that is responding. Then we also discussed this socket IO. Right. Uh, probably I shouldn't be reordering them i am not sure 
uh, whether reorder will cause some issues because Redis needs to be started before Bench can uh, serve. But I'm not sure. Yeah. Then there is Watcher. This is only for development. So you were asking, right? Uh, what's his name? I forgot. Yeah, you were asking, right? Why like some changes don't need refresh and some changes need refresh, right? So there is a watcher, this bench watch command. There is a separate process. So whenever you change your Python code or something, right? It will reload those modules. Sometimes it is out of scope of this. So one of the thing is uh, installing an app. So after an app is installed, sometimes it's not able to pick up the watcher. So you need to restart bench and the watcher will restart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, you can do this bench there just site here from hot caps clear cache. Yeah, and there is also clear website cache. Mm, so I think that also clears it for all users as far as I recall. There is no separate user cache. Reload, like the browser reload or the button reload? The browser reload is different. It won't clear cache. But, but when we do the reload actual the button, it will first clear cache in the backend. So it will just do same thing what we are doing, uh, doing with the command. Yeah. That actually doesn't clear cache. That. Hmm? No, no, no. The form view, form view. He's asking the form. In the form view, there is refresh. Yeah. That refresh actually goes in the backend and refreshes the data of that form itself. Only this form. Only this form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not at the frapper level. Yeah. Just in the front end, you will go to the backend and fetch it. But this cache, this clear cache, will actually clear uh, the, the application level cache. And clear website will clear all the template cache, etc. Jinja template cache. Okay, this was that process. So watcher was this. Then this is the scheduler. So what scheduler does is it's also a process. It runs schedule jobs. So suppose uh, in Frappe we have a feature which lets you define, okay, every five minutes run this piece of script, right? So we have server script as well. You can say, okay, every day run this, every week run this. This is on schedule, right? On schedule, you want to run something. This is the process that on that schedule picks up that and gives it to the background workers to run. So they run in the background. So it is not that you manually go in your browser and run it. It will in the background automatically every five minutes, it will start run and done. This is the scheduler. It will put stuff in the background yeah and this are so you can have as many workers as you want i have three workers here these are the one who do the job in the background so we can take a whole session on background jobs i've done a video on it uh, but usually if you have something too big say you are submitting invoices in bulk on click of a button or on some schedule or you are like very good example is salary slips in bulk you are at the end of the month you are doing right automatically you want to do at the end of month process salary for all the employees so that happens automatically on the background it also sends an email with the salary slip so that is the combination of scheduler plus workers Data import also happens in background. When you click start import, it shows you a progress bar, right? If, if time permits, we'll work with our own background jobs. Hmm? Yeah, to avoid. So 
when you make a request right to the backend there is some limit to the time it can take to respond otherwise it will give you a timeout error yeah there is some setting but there is a top limit to what you can go in nginx level you have to do as well sometimes nginx also times out in that case you put stuff in the background so there are uh, so let's let's take this in the advanced towards the end so our own jobs in the background yeah so these are the workers that do the work literally they are called workers <laughs> yeah yeah that's what i was thinking we'll we'll see how workers work and everything happens day 3 just remind me uh we'll see yeah, it's an advanced topic we want to come across it uh, frequently but you, now you understand what proc file is even if you don't remember all the processes at least you should know that okay there is a web process there are some uh, caches and queues so this queue is also related to background and then cache is the normal cache we use for the clear cache command right it is where it goes and clears the cache so three redis instances one web one socket io there is watcher watcher is not in production by the way in production watcher doesn't run watch is only for local you ch change the code it automatically reloads scheduler is for running some scripts on schedule scheduler puts stuff in background jobs and then workers pick those up do the job yeah that is yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so check docker engine there is uh, services so services are separate containers so fm services and then you can tell okay give take me to the redis service a recent change earlier it was all like bench but to make it multi tenant they took out the redis and mariadb to separate containers so one mariadb container is now listening to all the other docker stacks as far as i could like uh, understand so in services you will find it yeah yeah any other questions or let's check Yeah, crud, doc types. Oh, controllers and life cycles. So that's the next topic. Ah, uh, but before that, now you know what happens on the click when you click save on a new doc type, right? It creates a database table. So suppose I created the vehicle doc type. How can I check its data in the MariaDB console? In the database console, how can I check uh, that table? Mm. Bench does just site. So, it, are all do all sites have the same database or not? Yeah, exactly. The database server is same, but inside that each site has its own database. So that's why you have to mention the site to which for which site you want to open the database console. yeah so this is the hash name this is the actual database name i showed you in the config file as well it was still open somewhere yeah this right so this is the name of the database and password type so it is used by frappe to connect on your your behalf so yeah now i want to see all the vehicles from here select star from tab empty let's find out why upon not caps okay we stopped the bench for some reason okay what we did was port we changed the port in proc file remember yeah 
now we can start again now it is listening to 8000 that's good refresh yeah it's here yeah what were we trying to do vehicle yeah okay uh, BMW year 2000 color red I don't know if there is a model like this hit save and now if I go back to MariaDB I have too many tabs open so here yeah. now I'll go to MariaDB now if you see you have one record so just remember tab nothing special there so you can see what what was the modified creation owner is basically who created this right yeah cool so this was all about talk types and bench and frappe Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this one you're talking about yeah let's let's find out so you're talking about okay web server port Okay, so I don't know which one takes preference. The proc file, okay, they should match. But yeah, in order to find out, like since Frappe is also an app, right? So you have the access to the source code of Frappe as well. So if I go to the apps folder and open up Frappe, the code dot, and search for that web server code, where is it used? Okay, web server board, web server port. So I just global search for the property and I'm looking where is it used. So this is get URL port. Mm. so yeah basically the one on the site config is just the information for the apps that okay this is where the port is running but one on the proc file is actually used to run the site on that port right so this if this mismatches there might be some issues so if you update it there make sure you update it here bench will automatically if there is one bench and you install new it will automatically take 8001 for both This was web server port. Uh, okay. What else do we have here? So, yeah. You have the driver, right? Uh, but I'll, I now want full name. What do I want? First name and last name is there. I want a full name field here. Somehow. So what's the first thing I need to do? Add a field. Yeah. Yeah, but how will the user fill the full name then? Yeah. Next step. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basically I wanted to show this. This isn't feasible, right? So suppose 
like if you update it here uh, to john or something like that it doesn't update right so this is a field a good use case for an auto generated field so we want to combine two fields that we already have this is the first name and this is last name we just want to have a third field which is a combination of both here we can use some scripting right so if it's just to display in the form view right you don't want to store in the database then we have something called a virtual field so we go back go back full name i will search for virtual tick it off right hit save go back you will see that okay why is it yeah it is no longer visible it made it read only so if it has data it will be visible otherwise it won't be here it has data so it is visible let's clear cache so basically virtual fields don't add a column new column in the back end so how do we set it then how do we dynamically set it so in the options you have to write a python expression telling how the field will be formed so i will say this will be a string combination of first name space last name right so what frappe will do is whenever it is showing the form or when you do get doc or in the api you call it will just take the first name and last name join it and return it as this field it is not actually calculating and storing in the database so let's hit save go to driver list let's see if it works ah uh, okay there is an error this is not a valid json what did we do virtual doc field this is called a virtual doc field so if you get stuck documentation is always there so let's doc dot first name and doc dot last name so doc is the actual driver so see documentation is helpful hopefully we don't have console running somewhere yeah so this right now oh, let's try no no yeah like uh, i don't think it is available in the list get doc it is available invalid request arguments what did we do wait some issue let's refresh let's go back yeah looks correct let's make the request again validation okay let's first check if it is working in the ui or not okay something went wrong yeah as you can see it is like in the ui it is combining those two so it is working emma brown so it took the first name last name just combine it and it in the back end what are we doing v2 slash document slash driver 
it was this right let's let's get this no oh probably that yeah so we attached the body to a get request so it's shouting but fine it should have said that clearly but see full name is there yeah api so wh wherever it does get doc right it will give you that uh virtual fields not in list no so yeah get loss get all get list don't work because it is not in the db it is just a virtual thing calculated on the application layer yeah mm -hmm. yeah just in the user interface it this this name right this full name is not in the database but if we want it in the database then we'll have to do something else that is the next step mm -hmm. other doc tape as in Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just calculated in the backend and sent to you. That's it. And if again request come, it will again calculate and send. Yeah. fetch from no virtual fields has its limitations but yeah we'll solve this using controllers so this is quick if you just want to display some stuff this is fine but I, the other is if you want to use it another doc type fetch from in list view you want to display it even list view you can't display full name right now because it's a virtual field and virtual field doesn't exist in database so it, if it had to do that, it had to go over everything and then it had to do get doc for everything. That would be very slow. Hmm. Just showing as an example. But uh, the use case is like if you just want to show it, right? Then it is fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, no. Then you are saying about it won't automatically calculate the full name then yeah no so we have to write some script yeah yeah let's find out on so empty string plus whatever it is This you will be able to read. Yeah. So it once it comes in the form view, you can access it. That is also tomorrow's topic. Writing like this JS file will add some stuff and we'll find out how we can modify this form view, add custom buttons, trigger actions. Yeah. But yeah, let's solve it using the other way. Have it in the database, but Automatically calculate it whenever anything changes or the first name or the last name change. In that case, you can also fetch from, you can show it in list view, anything because it's just like a normal field in database, but it gets updated automatically. So let's go back, go back. I will uncheck virtual and I will remove the options. I don't want them now. Hit save. Go back. Go on, right? It's an empty field. Now it is up to us to set it. So now I'll go to the very first file that we are going to use. So where is it? That's why I don't want to have too many tabs open. Tab is also open. Let's close that. I think this one. Rentals, yeah. So driver.py file. Remember four files got created driver.py, driver.js, driver.json and the last one was test driver. And similarly vehicle, when we created vehicle, the same 
thing should have been created for vehicle but why okay. let's go and fix that yeah when did that happen <laughs> what should we set it to yeah the module that belongs to our app right <laughs> okay i didn't notice see vehicle is here so we'll go to driver because we want the full name of the driver should be to be set automatically so we have to write that code in the driver controller so let me just zoom in uh, here, here you will see a class called like a name exactly after the doc type so this is driver it inherits from this document class which is basically the base class for all doc types right here you have some hooks available hooks as in okay uh, say whenever this document is updated make sure you set the full name to first name plus last name that is one thing whenever this document is deleted make sure you clean up this documents as well whenever a new type of document is created of this new driver is created send an email so these are hooks in the life cycle of this driver document right so you can hook and add your own code so we'll start with one of them so before save so frappe will run whatever you write right here in this body before save of the driver document right and self refers to the particular driver that is being saved okay better it's fun to touch the screen <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah mm. so here we just say self dot full name equal to self dot first name plus we could have done the same thing with that we did with virtual field that is much better self dot first name L dot last name right just one line so before save just make sure you set the full name to first name concatenated with last name that is it now if we go back right let's go back go back uh, we should have gone to the driver list and change this to okay it was already <laughs> let's change it to my name see full name is getting updated now even if you try to do this right it will come back because what is happening it always runs this hooks so it will make sure the full name is set to this so how can we fix this user experience issue here yeah make it read only because the user should not read it this right they should not be able to edit it because it's a calculated field so let's make sure we make it read only yeah go to driver list now am i there see now it is read only and better so this is how controllers work so you can find the list of all controllers and when they run on frappe website controller methods no not this one controller yeah this is the list so you can see there is before insert this called before the document is prepared for insertion so this will run whenever a new driver is being created right then we have before naming so this will be called before it is given a name that name dr002003 so this is auto name so what you can do is suppose you have more complex requirements maybe you are calling an api to get the name of the doc type you can use this auto name hook to generate your own names so suppose the expression don't suffice 
and you want to run your own logic to generate the name maybe combining some attributes of the same and maybe applying some logic on that right so if it is an uh, you want to check the age okay if it age is greater than 18 the document name should be adult 001 can be the use case right just a simple use case that auto name hook can give you so you can just say uh, another hook i will add auto name cell you can say if self dot age greater than zero naming series this so naming series is also a concept today's assignment you will find it so i'm not telling the solution now <laughs> but yeah this was auto name uh, before validate validate before save is there and here you can see when it runs in which part of the life cycle so the most useful i think are on submit this is called when the document is submitted we'll learn about what submit submittable doc types are tomorrow uh, on update so whenever something changes in the document uh, similarly you have on trash this runs when a document is being deleted and after delete when the document is already deleted okay so you can find the list here you can play around with it right yeah this was controller class so these are hooks yeah mm. yeah there is like this can be a huge feature in among itself yeah yeah virtual field is this possible because on the fly it can generate in the python side but database it has to see when and how it will set it yeah yeah it's just a simple server script will suffice so, so server script before save this hmm. yeah then you create a server script yeah 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 right hmm? client script also yeah mm -hmm. can be can be if like yeah yeah take and feature request <laughs> more power yeah yeah so this but without the code yeah got it got it can be done. <laughs> yeah. Calculated or something like that. Calculated DB field. Yeah, but yeah, can be done. But yeah, till that is here, server script is the only way. But yeah, you can do a lot of complex stuff here. I mentioned, right? This is your area. Now you can import pandas here whatever you want like data, if you want to do data analytics you import pandas here and do whatever you want and return like frappe will handle it so this is like development realm so here uh, we will do some complex stuff when we have some more booking doc types we will calculate the amount automatically and we will do that kind of example so you will get more idea of this but suppose right last thing today <laughs> I've said it twice, I guess. Uh, I want to run some Python code on my running site, on any site. I want to just, just like I have MariaDB console, right? That I can execute SQL statements. Somehow, if I could execute Python statements, that would be good, right? We have Python console as well. So instead of MariaDB, just write console. So here we are doing MariaDB, right? right console and there is an option to auto reload whenever you change code so you can say auto reload yeah so it will tell you what apps are in this namespace which means the site frappe and rentals which is correct now you here you can say mm, frappe dot i will just give you one example get value driver 
Don't worry, I'll share the API docs. dr01 full name. Doesn't have a full name. Fine. First name. First name. Yeah, Jenny. Right? So what did we say? We use the ORM. So we have an ORM built in. Frappe.db.get value. I want the first name field of this driver. So first argument is the doc type, then the document name, and then fields. You can give, give a list if you want multiple fields. So one of the most useful and most used one is get doc. Driver. DR00. So it will return an object of driver instance, which is this class, which we were just running around with this one, right? So this will create an object of this class and return. So you can access anything. So let's store it in a variable, uh, dr or just d. Then you can say d dot first name, d dot last name. Maybe it doesn't have last name. Yeah, it is there. What? What else? When was it created, right? Who created it? So it's a Python object. So this is the third way I was talking about to do CRUD. First is what through the UI. You use the form view and list view and everything. Second is REST API, right? Third is this. So you can say frappe dot new doc. Let's create a new driver from here as well. Driver. D dot first name to John. D dot last name. D dot save. Again, license number is missing. So let's give it a license number. So this, I'm getting errors everywhere to make a point, <laughs> but let's see. Okay, now save. Now it is saved to the database. Let's exit from here. Uh, let's go back and see if our driver got created. Where is it? No. He caught the issue. So whatever you do in console, it doesn't auto commit. Some like you have to manually run. <laughs> so whatever we did, right? So there is something called frappe.db.commit. Have you heard about transactions, database transactions? Right? This is a general concept. So whenever you are making changes to the database, Frappe doesn't directly go and commit everything to the database. It will keep it in the in a transaction and will only commit if things go right. So you click the button. Suppose it is transferring 10,000 from one invoice to the other invoice. And one document got updated. And for some reason, some validation failed. Right? So if it would have committed it, it would have been issue, right? Because half of the work is done and how, if you try to repeat it, it might cause other issues. So that is why database transactions are there. So if something goes wrong in between, it will roll back to the point where it started. So this is what db.comment does. So let's create the driver again. There is a better way to create new doc. I'll show you that as well because now I'm frustrated. <laughs> to type this, this, this again. Yeah, let's go back. See, got created the top one. Yeah. And now a better way, use get doc, but give it an object. And then give it all the fields that you want. Then just call dot insert on it dot save also works so in this like in 
single statement you can create new driver yeah so i was telling that this is the same object right so if you have some method okay driver dot uh, send alert something like that so if you want to send alert to this driver uh, let's just print something sending message maybe here you call your sms integration api all is possible let's go back d d dot what was the method name send alert yeah sending message see it actually went because it's an object of this class so this is now python so you can have your own uh, custom methods as well here it's just not that you have hooks these are special named so these are special don't use for your purposes before save this all frappe calls it as specific hook points in the life cycle hook yeah any questions on this bench console yeah this system console this is more restricted does the same you can do the same things here you can do prepare dot get all uh, driver get all returns the list of drivers so i can print drivers execute server scripts are disabled that's fine so you starting like recent version server scripts are disabled by default you can enable them in your bench config hmm. yeah you can call so you do get doc driver and then you can call you can't import stuff so this has similar limitations as the server script on the customization side so we'll discuss this uh, as i was saying like we need to discuss the customization piece and the development piece separate so this is limited here you can't import pandas right you are not allowed to delete in sql query you can't delete yeah so here in this sql right like it is restricted you can't uh, delete or change schema of the hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. go to console <laughs> so you can just go to console and delete uh, because when you delete i think it first goes to deleted document and then you have to clean that that is the other way but yeah, usually delete you should delete the doc type document first not directly go in the database in rapid because maybe it is linked to some other stuff right so frappe cleans that up automatically but if you directly go and delete in the table uh, it won't be able to run any on trash or anything truncate works but uh, not recommended as long as like if you know what you are doing then that's fine yeah safe you have you have to know that okay this won't affect the rest of the system everything works because you have the control of the mariadb database anyways you can go inside and yeah so yeah this was uh, bench console this is very useful by the way suppose you are writing some complicated logic right here it was just full name equal to first name plus last name usually it is like see the items any promotion is applied or not this that and finally it calculates something in that case it is better you experiment first in the console you can experiment it roll back whatever you want and then at the end you can copy that code paste in your file and if you want to be more sure use the test driver.py file to write unit tests okay if i am giving 10 as this value uh, 20 as this whether it is calculating 30 or not so that will make sure you are not introducing bugs while adding new features so there don't run in production so 
either you run them locally so bench run test there is a command bench okay you have to exit from here run tests so then you can give it a path to the test it will run the major uh, like what do you say it is only useful while you are writing test usually what happens is you will integrate in the ci file so there is a github ci file i there was a yes or no right when we are creating an app whether you want to set up the workflow file that was exactly what will automatically run test whenever you push to github so it created a dot github folder there is this ci file which will if you see closely somewhere down the line it will run test the last line see it is running test for rentals app so this automatically happens in the ci so whenever you push something new it will automatically run it will show you a green check if it passed or a red cross if it failed no installing no at install time it is not run this is just the developer's task some new stuff then make sure you have some tests yeah whenever you are pushing to github it will run in github yeah i can show you an example but it's always a good practice if you are developing sophisticated apps always better going ठीक है मैम कूल विल कंटिन्यू सो या this file is will automatically take care of giving you the green check or the red cross i will can show you an example even frappe like the frappe See this? It ran two workflows and both passed. So green. The tests are very important, but nobody writes them. Nobody likes writing them. Yeah. So we are done for today, I guess. Any questions? We'll take. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, let's enable server scripts. So to enable server scripts, uh, server script. I even I don't recall the command. So server scripts. Bench set config dash global. Server script enabled one. So this will just do one thing. uh what this will do is remember how we enable developer mode and it just added a developer mode one to the site config this will do that but to mm hmm to the common site config so i will just run this command and then i will open up here you will see somewhere server scripts enabled one this you add it to your common site uh, config of the bench and it will enable bench wise so it is an, not per site the bench itself because it's in common site config so enabling server scripts we'll discuss server scripts okay. so they are like we wrote in the file right uh this py file we wrote our logic we can do that in the custom layer as well without coming to the app side you can just create a script write that line in the script and it will work so for the enabling that we have this
So, yeah. No, so public ten dollar sites? No, because it's on shared bench. Private bench, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. and then import yourself yeah so you can use the bench execute method so you you create a file anywhere you create a python file anywhere right if you want to run your own one off scripts these are called one off scripts basically so you create a file maybe let's create it you can upload from here Upload just like the normal file. So file upload. Yeah, anywhere uh, or attach it to any file. You'll get the URL. This file URL. And then you can use that. So suppose let's let's do an example if you want. So suppose I have a file. I want to read it in my custom app. Right. So I'll do it in uh, console itself. Rapid dot get doc. So this is one way, an easier way. So file. You can copy the file. Let's say drivers dot csv. This name, right? And it has a method called get content. If I'm not mistaken, let's store it in file content. Or you get content. I don't recommend. Yeah, get content. See. Yeah. So then you can process using the CSV module. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Anything? How was it? That's a big question. Till now, did you learn something new or you already knew a lot of it? Or some new stuff? Uh, not too hard, right? Uh, should I go slow or can we go a bit faster or is, is it fine? Is it going good? That's, yeah. The bench, yeah. Console, yeah, it is there. In the cheat sheet, it is there. If you don't find anything like specific, just let me know, I'll add it. But, mm. 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 No, no, it is good enough. So I will suggest use Google search instead of the search on the website for now, until someone fixes it. <laughs> uh, he 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 probably I don't know. Eventually, maybe yeah. <laughs> db dot get all is there? I don't think there is db dot get list. You might have seen db dot get all and get all. db dot get list. I have never used because get list applies permission db method don't apply permission that's the difference does not apply permissions get list applies permission rapid dot get list applies permission no db dot get all doesn't so any db method the get value the one we saw uh, set value they all bypass permissions no permissions are applied db anything in db bypasses permissions because it's for the developer realm i haven't heard of it let's find out yeah it is there it is an alias to get list i guess no 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 wait wait wait, wait. we'll find out i have first time yeah both are different so 
this applies permission and this doesn't. Like I'm guessing this is same as get all. So let's see the code. Let's answer this. <laughs> not good code. Uh, this is not good API, but let's find out. So this is get all inside the database, get list. So let's open Frappe and find out whether they are calling the same thing or not. That's a learning for us as well now. <laughs> I'll find out code dot def get list. Yeah, this is the one, the frappe dot, uh, what do you say? Get list, this one. And yeah, this is dot frappe dot client dot get list. So I think does the same thing. So it just calls frappe dot get list. And the database one, right? Which one? Yeah, there is a separate, yeah, yeah, one of this is called, there is separate API and like, behind the scene it will call get list. It will apply the permissions. So we were uh, looking for database.py. Nope. Yeah, TB dot get list and get list are same. Yeah, so applies permission. Only get all doesn't apply permission. Okay, good question. Yeah, you can use for child doctor. So you have yeah, that's what I said. Get list like applies permission. So in child doctor also like there is no separate permission for child doctor. So. In get list, no. Ignore permissions is mostly used with uh, insert. Uh, so you can use, you can use. Yeah. So get list. I don't think get all will be available because permissions are important here. Yeah. So otherwise you can write your own API and call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. And it is not safe as well because it runs in the client. So users have all the control this side. So it's better to restrict what we allow from here. Because get all doesn't have permission. So if someone does get all, like if they have access to get all in front end, that means they have access to everything. Right. That's why get list is there and get list will check the current session ka permission. Object model. Again. Yeah, there is, uh, I think, the commit, like we don't have, like, this guys have built it. Yeah, so view ERD. This is what, like you can see, this, these are the models. Model as in you, you meant this right? Oh, this is commit.frappe.cloud. So this was also built by the guys who built Raven. Yeah, so here you can visualize any, even your custom app, ka, even ERP Nix ERD, you can say if you want to see there are 170 doc types in account and how are they related with each other. Yeah, free tools. This shows you the relationship. See? 
it will show you if someone is a link field somewhere yeah in insights also we have now hmm. yeah these are the doc type entities mm -hmm. and these lines are basically links or child tables so suppose if i zoom in on this one where is the user of tab, tab user yeah you can see if you click on one of them it will show you uh, created on last modify what are the permission what are the fields yeah it's a good app